Okay, are we, are we, we're live. It is 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you snubbed up seven in the house. It is 2 p.m. Hold on. Eastern Standard Time. All right. And you snubbed up seven in the house. I know you keep saying that, son. <laughs> All right. Everything seemed to be working pretty pretty well. No technical difficulties. Waiting on my special guest to, to kick this off. Ah, how is everyone doing? Hope everything is well. And I thank all of you who are on time with me to help me celebrate what I call Soul Liberation Day. Okay, we're gonna just, uh, just had contact with my special guest earlier this morning. And uh, I don't know exactly how this works, did I have to actually be live in order for them to uh, be able to join the conversation? Oh, there's sister. I'm on, I'm live right now, sister. Yeah, I'm live now. Okay, let me see. There you go. You should be able to get in. It should be. That's why. Okay, let's try. Look, I think it's the same link. I don't know what's, what the deal is. Still can't get in. Sister Rashid is trying to get in. She's been been online since a uh, quarter till. Copy and paste the link of the one you are in now. That is the one I need. That's the uh, that's the one. That's the link that uh, I just I just I just posted. Let me see. Dark skin T or she. Oh, wow. No, we're not going to have this problem here. The last time we did the uh, did the broadcast, the last time we did the broadcast, I took the link exactly where I got it from right here. Okay, you know what? The video called because of an error.
Right, I'm posting you. I'm posting you that the link that I'm talking from right now. It's the same thing. Maybe I need to re restart it. Maybe I have to redo, re, uh, I'm, I'm getting, they said that the show is fine. They can see. Peace and respect your King Noah. Saying that the show is fine. Just can't get you, can't get you in for some reason. Maybe I need to, to, uh, restart it. I'm gonna. You think I need to restart the, the the whole the whole program? Okay. Hey, sister. Hey, what's going on is Tyrone and I are uh, in a Google Hangout together from the link that you sent. Uh -huh. But you got to send us the link from where you're at right now because we're not connected. Okay, what well, we're... we're I'm watching you, and I can hear myself talking in the background. Yeah. So we need a, we need a leak that you're, that's from your channel to join you. Because Tyrone and I are on a on the um the Google Hangout together, and you're not there, so it's the, it's not the right link. Okay, it's so totally okay, so how how do I do that? Go about doing get, getting us together here. Uh, shirt on. Right. Get that link and send it to us. That's the one that we need. So you want to copy it. That what I do is I just go inside the Google Hangout and copy and paste it, and then send it to whoever I want to join the Google Hangout. Okay, we'll try this one here. I'm, I'll put it in the chat room there. This that's a different one. I guess it's different. Okay, that's it. That's I it. Think that's once I get on there, and then you gotta send it to Tyrone because he, he and I was on a different one. Okay. All right. So there we go. There we go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. 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 Let me go to. I guess. Uh, I don't know where I can contact. Uh, you, Tyrone. I guess I, I'll send it to him on Facebook. Yeah, you can send him that same link on Facebook because. I think I'm still in. Wait a minute. Okay, got it. Okay, okay, I'm gonna get out of this one with you. Okay. Okay, so he said he'll wait. Lauren, uh uh, hold on one second. Hold on. Okay. Okay, what did I do wrong here? Okay. Hello. Now, Hello. Yeah. All right, there you go. What's going on, man? 
Hey, man, what's going on? Hey. <laughs> so I got you too, Sister Sheeta, right? Okay, I'm here. I just got Lauren over here. I have to sometimes digress to deal with her. But I'm here. How y'all doing? <laughs> hey, how you doing? All right. Okay. So so we in business. So we we ready to roll. We ready to roll. <laughs> All right. It's good to see you, uh everybody. Uh Sister Rasheed and Brother Taro. All right. You the host, Sister Rasheed. You can get this ball start started whenever you're ready. Okay, so we live, right? Yeah, we're live. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, okay. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for inviting me um, and having me here. I'm very honored to be a part of this. And, you know, I know I am the host, but here's the thing. You know more about what you want to say. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of be uh, letting you take the lead, but at the same time, jumping in and uh, speaking on the different topics that you want to uh, bring to the forefront and bring to the people. But once again, I'm very honored to be here. I think that this is definitely something that um, that black people need to be using the platform yeah. of social media to do something positive that's going to help us and bring us together and something that's going to create positive results for us as a people instead of all of the fighting and the division that we see yes. all over YouTube. So I think that this is an excellent thing and I want to thank you for being uh, for allowing me to be a part of it. So definitely. Oh, you're welcome. No, no doubt about that. But uh, I mean, you can just take it, whatever, you know, the, the thing, the thing is, uh, of course, is uh, our need for a soul identity and, and the liberation. And I'm pretty sure just, just the fact that you are, you represent darkism. Right. You understand that inner strength that one needs in order to overcome. That's what this is about. Right. And okay, I definitely want to lead off on that because I will yeah. say, I will say that I have received a lot of criticism that um, dark skin activism uh, via different methods that I've used through writing books about dark skin, giving commentary about dark skin, calling myself the world's first dark skin activist and all of these things, that one of my main criticisms has been that I'm dividing the black community. Right. But here's what I wanna say, this is very important. Number one, I'm not dividing the black community. The division was started when black people, Africans came over here to this country and entered into chateau slavery. Europeans started that division. Europeans created a, a, a class system, uh, if you will, based on skin tone. Rashida Strober did not create that. So right. number one, we have, we, and I deal with what is factual and what is true. The facts are that the division began during slavery. Not with me, because I wasn't even born during that time. <laughs> so I did not create this division, number one. Number two, what we also got to do is, uh, as black people, we got to deal with what is honest. If we want us to come together and, and, and say, you know, let's get united, we got to deal with all the, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We got to kind of iron out the kinks. We're not going to be unified unless we address certain things in our community. And for me, everybody has their own part to play. And that's why I said I'm happy to be here because I could clearly see that this is the type of discussion where all players can be involved and contribute um, whatever knowledge that they have to, towards our liberation. For me, it is dealing with the, the, the question of colorism, which I call darkism. And darkism and colorism to me is two different things. But my contribution is to deal with why is it that the dark-skinned people in, in, in the black race, in the African diaspora, why are they treated differently? So that's the, what I mean by when, we, when, we, when we're looking at questions of how do we unite? We have to deal with these little small, minute details. Somebody said the devil is in the details. And I think that if we get down to the details of why and how is it and what we can do about it, that dark skinned people, and I'm just giving y'all just uh, one example of many, I'm pretty sure y'all gonna contribute more, but if we, if, if we deal with, for example, the issue of darkism in our community and how it impacts uh, dark-skinned people 
in, in uh, particular and black people in general, then we are working towards, okay, this is a, a solution to the problem. This is how we handle this. So what we got to stop doing is saying, oh, you're divisive or, oh, that's not a problem or, oh, you're not sick or um, uh, be quiet about that. And just taking a moment, stopping and really listening and understanding what a person's gripe is, even if you don't understand it, yeah. even if you don't, even if you don't agree with it. Um, the whole goal is to say, let's address these, this or the uh, particular grievances. That's the whole goal. And then we move from there. And, 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 and so I just used uh, the issue of darkism as one issue within our community. But again, there's other issues that we have in the community. And as we do that, as we be honest with ourselves and we're willing to get down to the nitty gritty and deal with the truth and find a solution, hash out a solution, then I think we will move towards true liber liberation. Yes. So that's, that's my, um, that's my take on that to, you know, just to start it out um with the theme of soul liberation and what yeah. that means to black people and how do we go about that and i don't want to talk too much because i know y'all want to <laughs> but i think another aspect of this as well that is very important that i don't think that we spend enough time on like our our uh, um our ancestors did uh after slavery during the reconstruction era and and, and they dealt with solutions so the solutions of and what I'm interested in particularly is black economic development, the real type of black economic development uh, for black people. And I think that that's what is really missing um, from our community of today. We're not really dealing with those questions of, of real economic development in the way, because I think that black people was doing way better than uh, economically. We were on that road to real economic development after slavery than we are now. Right. Mm -hmm. Terrible. I mean, you have more black men, black people, black men in particular, in prison than there ever was. And people will make the argument, well, they were in slavery. But the point remains, you still have more black men in prison today than prior to the civil rights movement. So it's a problem. It's the econ economics is at the root of all of this. So I talk about this idea of systemic economic darkism, which you find uh, uh, dark skinned people in uh, uh, particular and black people in general in economic distress all over the globe. If we had to listen to people like he was a, he was a mulatto, but Booker T. Washington, mm -hmm. he was so much up on his economic game. You have people like A.G. Gaston that came along years later. You have you have uh, Madam C.J. Walker. These people were dealing with the economics. And whenever you know, we talk about we, we can go back to dealing with the issue of uh, black people in prison. Well, most of their crimes are of a economic nature. So the question is, what are we going to do about real economic development in our community? Not just talking, but after we have this soul liberation talk, what strategies are we going to implement and put in place? And are we willing? This is a very important part of it. If the strategy doesn't work, you don't say I'm washing my hands. You go back. You look at, hey, okay, this is what happened. This is the reason for this. And you revamp and you go and you rework it again until you get to a solution. We need more uh, black think, think tanks, mm. if you will. I don't think it's enough from what I'm seeing. But let me let me be quiet because I'll keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going right, to uh, we keep rolling. We're going to keep rolling. Give me brother Angel snuck up. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, I'm going to introduce myself and... um. Uh, the um, Rashida, I, I appreciate every word that you said there. Yeah. Um, and it is soul liberation. And um, you invited me. Um, I think you was talking about overcoming obstacles uh, yeah. initially, mm -hmm. but soul liberation fits right into that 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 whole theme there. And um, the the overcoming obstacles is like Sister Rashida. She's got a mission. And when I first seen her. I, I she kind of threw me back because I've never seen anybody uh, tackle that issue before, and she was so headstrong about <laughs> you know advocating for what she stood for. And then as I, I, I found out more and more about her, 
I was like, okay, well, there is an issue of colorism with inside the black community. And she is, you know, the one that is actually attacking this issue. So I can't hate on her for what she's doing and what she's standing for, because there's people like there, there's people out there that actually are bothered by this is issue. Um, I think that movie that Spike Lee uh, did a while back actually addressed uh, the colorism issue um, in that movie. Was it Do the Right Thing or something like that? Ooh, but that anyway, so so yeah, so I, I support that sister and everything that she, she's saying because there's an issue out there. But uh, talking about overcoming obstacles, um, I met, um, I call him Angel Snup Nup, uh, <laughs> but I met uh, Angel Snup Nup on social media here. And I, I and I was going through some things with this other guy on social media, and I thought it was a, a whole deal where black people can come together, stand on one uh, cause, and actually make something happen. But being a part of the black community it became more complicated than that. You know, uh, some of us are just confused, <laughs> and a lot of us, uh, instead of trying to stand behind a, a message and actually come together and do something, we always seem to be Pulling, up, pulling each other apart or trying to rip each other down and all that kind of stuff. So as I went forward, I seen the divisiveness. So I had to pull back from what I was doing. And, um, and, and, and I'm trying to get to this topic of overcoming obstacles because there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of uh, ways you can go when you're talking about overcoming obstacles. Uh, Angel Snup Nup shared his personal story with me. And this is a man that actually have overcome some real obstacles if you guys don't know about it already he and, and i'm pretty sure he shared it with you and he probably will share it with you today but he's actually himself actually overcame some obstacles um introduced himself to social media explaining uh what he perceived as, as issues in our community and actually breaking it down uh well i mean well spoken well articulate and he actually breaks down the history and some of the causes that actually why we act the way we act today. And this is why I respect him because I sit here and I listen to his videos and he breaks it down categorically and tells you why uh, he thinks or his opinion is why we act the way we act. And, and, I, and I can't disagree with him on, on the majority of what he's saying. And whenever um, he started looking at his life and overcoming the obstacles that he has, I guess this, this, was, this enlightened him to be able to come out here and, and, and talk to us and actually teach us in, in, a, in a manner to where we can learn from him. And in my personal life, overcoming obstacles, I mean, there's a lot of things that I do in my personal life that overcome obstacles day by day by day by day. I mean, it, as far as my family is concerned, as far as my personal relations is concerned, as far as, um, hell, my health is concerned. I mean, right now I'm on this, this weight loss trend. So you Whenever you're talking about overcoming obstacles, it's not just this one big thing that you target and attack. You you've got to. There's so much that 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 it is involved in your life that you just got to pick a target, go for that, overcome that, and go to the next one. Go to the next one, and it's a constant thing that you constantly uh, got to do. And I hope I ain't confusing people by, by trying to you know take a shotgun blast to this whole topic. But the if, if I can just dwell it down it all dwells down to your mentality, your motivation, and how, um, how determined you are to accomplish whatever it is you got to accomplish. So once again, I appreciate you, Angel Snup Nup. I said I'd be here today, and I'm here. So I want to discuss whatever topics on the table is, you know, as far as, you know, as that's concerned. So thank you for inviting me, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Um, well, I guess. Well, I guess. I had an opening from my soul sister Rashid and an opening from my soul brother Tyrone. And uh, I want to thank both of my uh, sister and, and brother for coming and joining me on this occasion that I call Soul Liberation Day. It's, I am very happy to see uh, all of you and my other 10 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have 10 subscribers, y'all, so, you know. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Let me, let me talk for a second, honey. Yeah. Would you say something, Sister Rasheed? No, I'm, I didn't. Go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get into this this lecture. I hope I don't bore anyone. And oh, Hold on. Before you do that, let me, let, me, let, me, let me get the hard cold on the check-in. Uh, how you doing, brother? <laughs> Who's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? No, 
Our code. Subscribe. Our code. <laughs> so we're going to be able to talk, uh, brother, uh, hard code. And we're going to, as soon as I do this, we can have a, just a general discussion and talk about, you know, what I said in this lecture or whatever we want to speak about. But again, I welcome everyone to uh, this Google Live edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am your host, of course, as you know, Angel Snub Nub Seven. Uh, your soul brother, number one. We do it so here. You know, uh, I, I don't do it black anymore. You know, I don't do it Africans no more. I, I do it with the, with soul. We, we soul people here on this forum. That's a, 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 a evolution into a, a deeper understanding. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But again, I want to. Uh, Thank my, my guest, Soul Sister Rashida Strober, the original and first dark skin queen of dark skin activism. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gotta get that, keep that, keep that in mind. It's the, she's the first, the original of dark skin activism. I thank her for joining me on this forum today. And uh, what I like about Sister Rashida is that uh, actually, Sister Rashida, you pump me up. You really do. You give me that, you give me that energy. This sister has so much energy. And I'll tell you something else. When you support Sister Rashida, and again, it don't, it doesn't make any, I don't know why we keep tripping. I don't agree with this. The sister is just having a play. And the play, the, the, the base of the play is darkism and things that how does that hurt me? It does not hurt nobody. Help the sister trying to do a little something. something. Richard Pryor said back in the day, help any black person, soul brother and sister, just trying to do anything that's positive. What's wrong with that? But we got me on these kicks. I can't do this because you don't believe this way and you don't do it. Uh, you're on the road to nowhere. Our what unity here, our unity here, myself, Rashida, and Tyrone makes us stronger. Unity makes us stronger. Right. If right. all of us was united, we already understand what we disagree. Why don't we stand upon what all of us can agree upon and work from that foundation? That's what we want to talk about today. Right. 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 You know, right. You, know you say that. Um, <laughs> you say I got a lot. But you know, but you know, Brother Thompson, Brother Thompson touched on something in regards to your own personal story. I hear some uh, background noise here. I don't know where that's coming from. But anyway. I have a lot of respect for you because of your back story. And a lot of our brothers, I don't know how much of that you uh, want me to share or speak on, but what I, the, the bottom line is a lot of our brothers and sisters being in this country, especially after slavery, have experienced the extended plantation. Okay, mm. we've experienced that. And so to me, any brother or sister that comes out of that, that right, and, and and if you come out of it with your mind intact, with your with 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 the willingness to want to go out and change your life and help other people and give back to your community, that to that gives me energy. That is a part of my energy, because when you look at things like the extended plantation, you see the effects of darkism. That's the thing. It's a it's a systemic thing. It's a global thing. And that is the reason why I continue to fight because I look around and I see all this injustice done. And if you see all this injustice done, it's like you either gonna sit there and you're gonna accept it and be a sheep, or you're gonna say, what can I do to contribute to solving the problem? Right. Okay, what can I do to help the generation that's gonna come after me? Because don't think for one minute that these young folks that are not under attack, they are. And it should, and I hope it's my hope that it wouldn't it wouldn't take them years and years to understand. Okay, this is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Some of them got a little hard head and they won't listen, but there's a lot of them out there that will listen. And so the internet is providing a platform for anybody that's positive and that have something to bring to the table that's going to help, particularly a young person, not just a young person, but I think about younger people because they don't know. They're just coming up in life. They're trying to understand. You want to help them avo avoid certain pitfalls. So it, the internet is providing a solution to 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 help other black people from all over the world. And and, and you said something about having 10 subscribers. Let me tell you something. And I'm mm. pretty sure you know this. Don't think for one minute 
that these people are not loving and your, your followers and your subscribers are not loving what you do. It doesn't matter if it's one person. None of that matters. What matters is that you getting out the message to those people that are listening that is meant to hear. Because I know for a fact, I can speak from experience that people have told me, hey, I love when you just come on here and just talk. That encourages me. Just by you talking, speaking it. You don't mm -hmm. ever know who you helping and who you touch it. Like, so it's very important. That's why this whole event is very important because it gives us strength to, to, to be able to say, okay, I can go another day. I can do this. I can do that. I can come back at it again. And you keep coming back at it again and again. And if you keep doing that, of course, you're going to start seeing some good results. So, you know, I just wanted to just throw that in there. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Brother, before I get into my little lecture here, Brother, brother Tyrone, do you want to say add a little something? something? Well, um, I, I agree with well, uh, everything what uh, Sister Rosita just said. And um, let me ask y'all something since y'all do live. Is, is there a way that I can share this live on my YouTube oh, channel? So, so other people, so the people that subscribe to my YouTube can, can actually see that I'm live. Is there a way to share it? Yes, you could take the link and um, put it on your, I just, I've been posting it all over Facebook. Actually, that's what I'm doing right now. You can take the link um, for you. You got to go to the one where we're we're live on the channel and uh -huh. um, paste it. So I I hope you know how to do that. Like you. So so you said take the link that's live on the channel and paste it where? I, I, that's what I've been doing. But I'm saying, is there a way that I can make it live on my YouTube channel so people can see that live feed also? Like semicast. Off of you. I've never heard of being able to paste the link. Okay. On YouTube. Well, that's right. Okay, but well, yeah, I'll say something real quick, Angel Snup Nup, and um, yes, sir. Uh, so so once again, I appreciate being here. Um, and, and like I said, like 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 the sister was saying, is that the, the, the message is, is what's important. Um, the, the number of subscribers and all that kind of stuff, yeah. Um, it's nice that all these people that has the um, the charisma and, and, and the, the, the little bling or whatever they do, <laughs> that, that uh, people fall for them. And, and you know kind of like follow them in mass numbers but that's what i think is a human flaw is because mm -hmm. we fall for those charismatic uh wordy type people that really ain't saying nothing and really ain't giving you anything so that's important to them but what's what's important about what you say and do is is the quality of what the message that you're putting out here and and the the truthfulness behind it so whenever you speak I mean, there, there. You can tell that if you dig into what you're saying, you can validate it and verify it, and it, it you, you can't question it. So the only thing you you can do is accept it or deny it. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times, because we're so dogmatic in our thinking and, and programmed to believe what feels good to us, we just push off the truth and we continue to stay in this this slumber, this sleep. That we've been programmed with throughout this society um and part of the program I mean, is, is the, the 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 people that are against dark-skinned people like sister uh rashida is a uh, 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 advocating but like i said your your message is important and i kind of i kind of pulled away from being so emotional about what i do and kind of looked at it as, as a what i on social media as information and entertainment because if you ever listen to talk real solution you know there's a lot of bs that goes on over there but then again on the other hand there's a lot of information that you can get from, from so i just look at it like that and hopefully somebody get a message from what i'm saying um and if not then you, you you're, you're definitely entertained but like i said I, I appreciate being invited here again man and uh I'm not a I'm not a wordy person, you know. So. Oh yes, you are, bro. I don't heard you. Say <laughs> <laughs> you by yourself, you have to roll. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I love you, brother Tyrone, because you're like myself. I know that I'm not uh, alone out here. Your uh, thinking process, you know, when I listen to you on Blog Talk Radio, your your thinking process. You have to, and we are in a situation where we have to think out of the box. And we have to come up out of these, and I use your word. You start using that word dogmatic. I use that word dogmatic now, too, because it's what it is. You have to come up out of these, these uh, thinking processes, especially when we, we have used many of them, and they're just not working. You know, I, I love Islam. I came from up out of an Islamic background. 
But when it's all said and done, that's not working. Many of the things in the way that we're doing things is not working. And as far as the enemy is concerned, they have seen the marching and the protesting and all these different things that we, they know about us, they don't even trip off of us. They don't trip off us no more. Whenever you're dealing, if, or if you are in a fight, you get, your, you get the attention of your opponent when you try something new. And they're like, what is he doing? Where is this coming from? We have to come new. And that's what Talk Real Solutions is about when brother Tyrone uh, is speaking. I don't know about the, these other, and that's, that's another thing I like about his show, um, Talk Real Solutions, is that he's not afraid of other opinions. He allows opinions from all types of places. And that's good. We need to hear those opinions. We need to allow people to talk. But if that talk is not, when it's all said and done, if the talking is not going to lead to talking about real solution, then just like Brother Tyrone said, it's entertainment. Right. right. And so I, I'm not interested in entertainment. We have generations, just like Sister uh, Rashid was saying earlier, we have a generation that we must look look out for. Otherwise, we become the generation that they will hate. Them Negroes didn't do a damn thing for us. They sit back and allow this. Just like some people right now talk about the elders. The elders didn't do this. The elders didn't do that. But, you know, why are you complaining about what the elders didn't do? As we grow, we become an elder. So what are you going to do different than the ones that you complain about? Because sooner or later it's going to be your turn. Matter of fact, some of these people, you might be in your 20s or 18. You really are an elder right now because to the little six, two and six year old, you are an elder. So what are you going to do different than the generation before you? Before you get all high, mighty and holy and righteous, what are you going to do? In fact, this present generation, what I see, they're living off the work and the sweat and the blood and tears. Whatever the elders did in the past, that's what they're living off of. They have not done nothing in the present to change. No laws. They built no institutions. They have, they're not doing anything. So how in the hell do you have the nerve to talk about what the elders did or didn't do when now you're supposed to be smarter, you are in a better position, and you are stagnant? Mm. Except, mm. except on social media, we can re, we can keep <laughs> reposting the pictures of Malcolm X over and over again. Malcolm is is I love Brother Malcolm. This is Brother Malcolm on my chest. Brother Malcolm is not here. He cannot help us. You can post this picture from day night. You can repost it and re, and Photoshop and he cannot help us. He cannot help us. We are dead for worshipers. I don't understand that. You have myself, you have Sister Rashida, you have Brother Tyrone. We are alive and you give us hell, but then you're gonna post and talk about Malcolm. And I guarantee you, if he was alive, you'd do the same thing with him. Yeah. Because the, look how they treated him when the man was alive. We're dead folks worshiping. We worship Jesus. Jesus dead. We worship Muhammad. Muhammad dead too. All these things we, we, we work dead work. Uh, a Sojourner Truth is dead. Frederick Douglass is dead. All these people are not alive no more. They cannot help our ancestors. I respect our ancestors. They're not here. They cannot help. Matter of fact, they could not help themselves. They died in that horrid condition. Mm. What are we going to do different? That's what we want to talk about. So they laid the so foundation they for us. Yes. We're supposed to pick up. I hope you don't mind me just piggyback off of what you're saying. Yes. True. So we pick up the baton like runners do and keep mm -hmm. going with it and come up with new innovations. I think that that's where uh and people might be upset with me about this but I, I, you know i just have to speak what i see is true i think that's where europeans come they're they're beating us at of course they had a head start let's be honest mm -hmm. but they know how to pass the baton and create uh situations where um their children's children can come up with new innovations and it's all in the name of economic and political sustenance and the continuing of their economic and political power. So mm -hmm. in the same vein, what we have to do is figure out a way to teach um, future generations to do pick up the baton. Like you, you talk about Malcolm, you talk about 
um, the, the black people that came before us, what can you do besides, like you said, you got a great point, besides posting Malcolm X pictures, <laughs> fantastic. But what can you learn from Malcolm that you can use today and bolster that idea? Right. That's so, so, for example, with uh, studying political science, and again, I don't say this to impress people. I'm not about that. I'm telling you straight up. I, I love to impress. Right. I tell people this so they understand the backdrop. Mm -hmm. So as a political science, when I was working on my graduate degree in political science, is nothing more than a think tank. That's what these universities are. They sit there and they think and strategize on how to keep power. So I studied these things and looked at certain things. Looked at my thing was I always want to know why are dark skinned people treated the worst. Mm. So after I had an understanding of that and looking at the colorism literature, I said, let me come up with a new paradigm. This is what these people do. They have paradigm shifts. If you go and study the great European thinkers, one of them comes along, like, let me give y'all, Karl Marx is a perfect example. Marx came along and now we have Marxists right now. He's just one of many. So mm -hmm. what you do is you come along and you expand whatever idea or whatever um, discipline into something that's tangible and that's beneficial. So what we should have been doing, and I do thank God for the civil rights movement, Please don't take this as disrespect. But what we one of the things that we could be doing is we can go back and we can revisit the history, the economic history. Because for me, everything is economic. I'll just tell y'all. Even when I talk about dark darkism, dark skin, believe me, it's the black man number one. I gotta be honest. Number two is economics. How can we get in a better economic situation? What can we do? So, so for example, going back, revisiting the ideals of um, uh, Madam C.J. Walker who was super poor and made millions of dollars off of the hair care industry. So you got some sisters out there that are, have actually done that. They looked mm -hmm. at it and they said, okay, we could do X, Y, Z. But then we got to take it to the next level as well. Cause some of us are not putting that money. We're not turning it back around into our communities. We're taking it out. But I'm just giving an example of how you look at something and look at an idea and you expand. So example with, with brother Malcolm X that people love so much. What was one of his ideas? Take it and expand it to help other people. Mm -hmm. And I there's some people, there are some, to their credit, there are some people out here that are actually doing it. But I would like to see more of that being done. So, and, and I'm, I'm talking to myself as well in terms of our liberation. I am constantly coming up with ways that I can help a young person so it, life won't be so rough on them. Because mm -hmm. that's what it is. It's, it's a struggle for us as the black people and darker skinned people. It's hard. Why does it have to be so hard? Let's make this thing easier. I'm tired of poverty. It mm. shouldn't be that way. So what we got to do is get our best minds together with morals and ethics and stop going out and saying, I'm going to take my brain power and work for somebody's corporation. That's great. Take that brain power, start your own corporation, teach somebody else how to do it and create economic development. I've done this myself. I'm not saying anything that I haven't, I haven't done. I might not have done it to a huge level that I would like to, but the principles are there. So I think that if, as a part of our liberation, if black people would just do this on a small level, start to understand uh, like uh, the, the, the black people before us after slavery and during reconstruction did, they understood it was about economics. They understood that. They understood that it was about economics. Of course, you had people like W.E.B. Du Bois who was talking about political rights. But I think I would make the argument, and I'll do some research on this, to prove it that the vast majority of black people coming out of slavery understood it was about economics, 40 acres and a mule. What is that? That's economics. But somehow we went off onto this, I want my uh, uh, civil liberties, my, my uh, civil rights. That's great, but where the money? Hmm. That's our problem. That's that's where it's at for me. I'm sorry I'm yelling at y'all. No, no, you're good. Uh, 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 before we get too far away from your point, uh, ain't just no, no. I mean, I'm glad that you you named out these guys like Malcolm X and and, and Garvey and others, and and I'm glad y'all named these people. But you know, uh, you're tiptoeing into an area that I I, I kind of advocate myself, and that's that's this idol worship. Yeah. Um, like you said, those, those people are deceased, and, and I'm not taking anything away from their contribution right. to the black community. Trust me, I'm not doing that. But 
as 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 I sit out here and do my my, my little advocacy, I talk about the mentality of our community and and what uh, I think has got us stuck. And as you look at the murders that go on in this country today, and how these families react at these police these police killers in this country, the first thing that they're doing in the courtroom is forgiving <laughs> the murderer. Uh, they're praising Jesus, and they're and, and they're, they're they're wishing for a uh, you know somehow or another this magical thing to help ease the pain and if you look at the black conscious community on social media they're idolizing these people too like these people really have powers or the ancestors can come back and do something for them and this stuff is just not real to me and, and as i speak this way I, I get a lot of pushback because we have been programmed uh through that bible and other uh, uh, religious doctrines to just believe in this false hope and this false sense of, of actually manifesting something that is going to help us out of our conditions. My thing is we're individuals and if I want to eat tomorrow, I got to get out there and work today. There, there's no Jesus is just going to go out here and make me create whatever wealth or economics that I need to put food on my plate. So looking at it from that rudimentary uh, angle, we need to look and see that it's all about us and what we do. If yeah. I build myself up, if I build my family up, it's going to contribute to the black community. It's going to be positive toward the black community. And there, there's, to me, I mean, if you do the same thing and that other people do the same thing, then all of us will come up together and we can be looked at as a unit as doing something positive. But we're, we're waiting to come together to find this leader and all of these leaders out here are manipulating the people, taking money from them, lying to them. You can go with, with Brother Polite. When he first initially came on social media, he was all RBG, black power, uh, black content. And look at him now. He don't give a damn and he'll talk shit about it. And Umar Johnson, I know I'm calling names, but I don't care. <laughs> Umar, Johnson, <laughs> Umar Johnson, he's the same thing, creating this fake ass black school that he's gonna, and he's taking money from people. And other people just do the same thing and they see how gullible we are. And they know that we're looking for leadership. So they yeah. take advantage of that. And I think that we need to stop that. We need to stop looking at these the, our ancestors, the, the icons of, 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 the, of the past, and thinking that they somehow know they got magical powers that is going to uh, be passed on to us. Now, like Sister Receiver said, we can look at what they've done and build on what they've done. But to sit up here and wait for these spirits to manifest themselves in our bodies and, and actually uh, become a Malcolm X, that ain't going to happen. You, you, you know, we need we need to get real whenever it comes to looking at where we at today. So I agree with what you're saying there. <laughs> oh, wow. It's, I mean, we got leadership right here. You know, actually, from my position, we are in a <clears throat> we are in a an environment and we're looking for special divine individuals or special divine groups is going to come from us as a people not a special individual or a special group this situation is so dire it's so messed up that you're going to need the uh, power of brains power plural not just a, a individual or a group right groups of individuals cannot solve this problem it's, it's, it's too massive it's too they don't have the knowledge it's going to take it's going to take us as a to come together as a people, because as a people, we have the knowledge and the understanding to do whatever we need to do. Because see, Angels and Nothing Up 7 can come on YouTube and I can talk pretty decent. But if you ask me to fix your car, you're out of luck. It's not gonna happen. So we need people not only that can sit on a, get on a rostrum and run their mouth, but you need people who can fix your car Know about infrastructure, can build a road. You need people with all type. And see, that's the, we don't see no value in ourselves and our own talent. We think that the preacher, the, the person on YouTube that's speaking of, they, for some reason, they're more divine and more better. I'm not more divine and no better than anybody that's out here. I don't see myself as special or divine. I'm just your little brother, experience, sharing the information with you because I think, matter of fact, not think. I know if we act upon 
what I've learned, we can get out of this situation almost overnight. But what hinders us is the same thing that what we're talking about right now that Sister Rashida pointed out and Brother Tyrone pointed out. These things we have to deal with once and for all. But uh, again, I think uh, so Sister Rashida and, and, and my brother Tyrone Thompson, I'm not going to take long. I want to go ahead and and get into my little lecture here. Please be patient with me. Um, I don't want to take a whole lot of, of our time, but I just want to put something out so that we can speak about it after I finish. And uh, I don't know, let, let's make a nice day. I, this is family day. We, let's, let's just let's do it. You know, let's make the time. Let's just talk. To, you know, because who knows when we're going to get together again. Yeah. Okay, so with that said, let me say this. Let me let me get, begin like this. Of course, as always, in the name of, of our ancestors, regardless, all ancestors, not just the royal ones, the, from the poor, the royal, whatever, wherever they found themselves in, in this life, I respect all of them, not no special ones, all our ancestors, whoever they may be. And that's, see, that's, that's, we don't even know really who they are. Mm. So we got, we have a lot of work to oh, yeah. do here. Oh, yeah. But I want to say this. The liberation of the soul. And I want to give you my background and why I want to celebrate this day. Because actually, I did not celebrate this day 10 years ago when you think I should have. I was just happy to be out of that situation. As many of you know my story, or possibly you heard bits and pieces, and it's, it's so long, I'm not going to go. I'm going to try to make things as brief as possible. But I was locked up in a mental institution for 10 years. And I'll give you a, give you a brief background on, on how all that started. I want to say, though, I have never tried to hurt nobody on purpose in my life. I've always treated people the way I want to be treated. I don't, I've never owned a gun, even to this day. The only knives I ever, I ever owned is the ones that you use to chop up a chicken or something. I've never tried to hurt nobody in my life. Growing up as a little boy, I wanted to be an entertainer. I wanted to, I wanted to uh, write stories and act and things of that nature. I wanted to be in, in the entertainment industry. And then I was introduced to Michael Jackson in 1977. Not introduced, introduced to the Jackson 5 music in 1977. I wasn't interested in music. But after listening to the Jackson 5, he inspired me to want to be a singer. So I, so I began to pursue songwriting and singing and dance. I wanted to be like the second Michael Jackson. And I met this fella in 1990. And any, anyone who is pursuing an entertainment career, you become so obsessed and you, you, you just want to do that so bad that you open yourself up to exploitation, up to somebody uh, putting you in, in, in a bad situation. And so this fellow that I met, he really was good at what he done. I mean, we, uh, we did tours and we did schools and uh, he knew Patti LaBelle. Matter of fact, as far as my entertainment career was concerned, uh, I was a. Uh, I opened as a comedian because I tried the comedy thing. I opened as a comedian for that Caucasian guy. What's his name? Uh, Jeff Foxworthy. Uh, what's that show that he hosts? Are you smarter in the eighth grade or something like that? I opened for him when he was when he was a, a nobody. He was a little guy. Oh wow. Yeah, I opened for him, and I was introduced to uh, the manager of uh, what's his name, Anthony Anderson. Mm. Back in the day, he was the manager of Anthony Anderson when a Anthony Anderson was first getting started in comedy. You know, I've uh, I've did some performing in schools and I've done, I've sold some records. I've done a little bit of this and that and that. In fact, the guy that I was working with got a record contract and he got a production deal. And I was going to be the first artist on his label, and Parliament Funkadelic was the main. Uh, artists on that label. So we was on the same label 
as Parliament Funkadelic, George Clinton and the boy. And we and when uh, he first got signed, we got the whole Parliament Funkadelic collection. The record label gave us all the, the records. Mm -hmm. But uh, that sort of went bad and uh, independent again. And this fella that I was working with, like so many of us, we are materialistic. We're materialistic and we have this these dreams of grandeur. He he talks about you know living the beat the Beyonce Jay-Z type lifestyle, whatever, the, the jet setting and the room mansions and all this crazy stuff. Me myself, because I have a nation of Islam influence, I wanted to be an entertainer, but I wanted to take my money and I wanted to use my talent to help uplift my people. Mm. That's what was on my mind. It was nothing selfish even to this day. It's never nothing selfish because I don't trip off material things. I don't care anything about the golds and the diamonds and all that. I want liberation. I want us to be free from an oppressor. That's the only thing ever be on my mind. But he wasn't like that. And so things didn't go very good. And I was working with him and we was renting keyboards and I said, I told him, I said, instead of keep renting these keyboards, why don't I just buy this keyboard? This, this keyboard was $3,000. And uh, I bought the keyboard. I don't play the keyboard. I don't play instruments, but he was the one doing the production. So I, I allowed him to have the keyboard. To make a long story short, he stole the keyboard. He pawned the keyboard to pay his rent. And that's when the trouble started. Mm. That's when the trouble started. And if you look at any of these uh, court case shows, like Judge Judy or whatever, the people who owe another person money will always talk about, they stalking me, they harassing me. But they never say, you owe this person money. You, you took their money. That's what it was all about. So just like many of these people, they call the police and he's going to accuse me of stalking him. And, and at the time, the state of Missouri had a, a new stalking law on the books. And guess who they're going to use to, to experiment with this new stalking law? Yours truly. You. Yeah, they used me to act on this, this, this law. Mind you, these crackers is racist anyway. So he called the police, and I got arrested for this stalking crap because this man stole my $3,000 keyboard. And mm. I'm delusional because he didn't. He told them, I ain't steal nothing from, I ain't do it. But now, of course, we went to court, and a judge decided that he did steal this keyboard from me. I have not, got my, I have not gotten the keyboard or $3,000 yet. But I was charged with stalking. And it was some other other garbage, but they I guess they guess they couldn't really try to prove that at all. And uh, and uh, that's when my trouble started. And then I was I was uh, diagnosed by a psychiatrist who who came to talk to me for about five minutes. Yep, he's crazy, all right. And that's when now see it's already bad when you're charged with a crime, but when they put that mental garbage on you, you done. I was a done deal. It's, it's, it's over. It's done. Mm. So then they give you a public defender. The public defender, I am I am one out of 50, 50 60 clients that he has. So he's going to do whatever he can to ease his workload and uh, talk me into pleading insanity. And that's where my trouble started. Because in the state of Missouri, in, in many states, like in Florida, there was a big case in Florida and they were keeping people lifelong. I forgot what the actual case was, but it was a case in Florida. And they, they stopped. You had to uh, give people limitations on their stay in these mental institutions. But in the state of Missouri, they can keep you, from, they can keep you there for six months to the rest of your life. Oh wow. oh, wow. So I'm looking at a lifelong sentence. Now. They found out these devils. They did their uh, research or whatever. They knew what I, what I was saying was true. That this man simply stole my keyboard. I was upset. It had nothing to do with stalking him. I just wanted my keyboard. Get my keyboard. 
But instead of just confessing and just saying, okay, we made a mistake, you know, we'll give you, know, we'll give you probation. You know, go on back and live your life. No, they're going to charge me with stalking and stick to it, these demons. You don't understand, and many of us don't understand how wicked the justice system really is. Here I am in court. I'm in chains with shackles on me. These two Caucasian guys in front of a Caucasian pink judge, he knows these guys, so they go up before me. And they have a long criminal record going way back when they was 17, 16 years old. They were looking at seven to 10 years in prison. And that cracker gave them seven months probation. Mm. Then it was my turn. I don't have a criminal record. I don't do drugs, don't drink, none of that. You didn't have, when I stepped didn't have out, a criminal record at the time. Excuse you me? said you didn't have a criminal record? No, I don't have a criminal record. Right. I'm sorry. But when it was my turn, I stepped up. We're going to charge him to the fullest extent of the law. Mm. That's what they've done to me. And see, this is a sad thing about it. This is what really gets, like, uh, what's his name? On Family Guy say, this is what really grinds my gears about so-called black folks. Skinning and grinning in your face. Keep talking about uh, all this, I love black folks thing. Mm. Okay, I'm a black folk, okay? But as soon as the black folks say something they don't like, I see why you crazy. I see why they done to you. You you's crazy. Now, other than that, if you agree with them, they'll be with you. Man, them devils, them honkies, look what they done to you. Man, that was unjust. But as soon as you said something they don't like, then it's a whole different. Now they they said that the Caucasian people are liars and manipulators and deceivers. But in my case, since I don't agree with what you're talking about, yep, they was right. You crazy. You deserve everything you got. But these are the people, these are the Negroes that talk about, well, I'm a black folks. Malcolm X was a black folks. The nation of Islam teach that the black man is God. The nation of Islam claims that they are Muslim. Muslims do not kill Muslims. It's against the tenet of the Quran. It's against the tenet of even the nation of Islam teaching. But they ignored all that because we still have that self-hatred for another dark-skinned person. So they murdered Malcolm, but yet it's still Malcolm's still a black man and he's supposed to be God. So you're telling me that you have no problem in killing God in front of his wife and his children. And these are the Negroes that's running around her that many of people are looking up to them. How evil and wicked. I would never, I don't care how much I disagree with you. I would never tell and wish harm on another brother and sister. Never. I would never wish you to go to jail. I'll never wish that your mama die. People come on here and say, I, I will hope that you die tomorrow. Yeah. Idiot, because you're going to die sooner or later. You're going to be there too sooner or later. We all going to go to the sweet by and by. Right. So I don't know what you're talking about. I wish you died. Our dying process begins as soon as we're born. Because on down the line, you're going to meet the Grim Reaper sooner or later anyway. So what? Who cares? But this is how these people, they, these, this black conscious scholarship, these folks, they skin and grin in your face until you don't agree with what they're talking about. Mm. And then they talk about black people are righteous by nature. That's a damn lie. It can't, it can't be true. Right. First of all, how can you tell me that black people hate you when you need to first, in order to say that that is true, you have to examine, observe <clears throat> black people in their natural environment. Being a slave ain't, and you're not in your natural environment. The way that we are living now is not our natural environment. Matter of fact, we are not even, we're not, we don't even know exactly who we are. The only thing we do, we're nothing but Oreo cookies. I said dark Europeans. We're nothing but Caucasian people with dark skin from birth. And you can holler black power all you want. The only thing I see is a black power Oreo cookie. I know what you <laughs> are. You can, you can claim and holler and be whatever you think that you are. I know what you are. You are black power, comedic, Hebrew Israelite, Oreo cookie. That's the bottom line for that. They don't like when I say that because it's true. Truth hurts, don't.
It does. Skin and grin and, and, and these and brothers and sisters' face. And you don't give a damn. You just want to slave for your plantation. Join my comedic plantation. Join my Hebrew Israelite plantation. My black Muslim plantation. Everybody looking for slaves. This rostrum do not represent slavery. I don't want you as my slave. Right. I don't get upset because you disagree with me. I don't want you on my plantation. I'm not going to serve. I don't want you to serve no God, no alien, no spook, no pigeon, or whatever it is. Right. I want you free because after 500 years of this hell, you deserve not to be a slave to nobody, including some God. And exactly. God should understand that if he if he if he's a real God. I don't have enough serve, sir. I'm sorry. If I met this God right now today, I said, sir, I respect you for being God, you know. But uh, that serving thing, um, I had 500 years of that. Didn't go well, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I would just have to tell God, no, -uh, ain't happening. We can serve one another. And really, when you talk about serving God, how can you serve a God that can do anything? The way they, do, the way they describe God, God can just snap his finger a little bit or whatever, and boom, magic stuff. How can you serve somebody like that? What can you do to serve God? Unless it's an arrogant thing, you can do it yourself. But I just want these people just to, you know, just serve me. I, I'm just so great. Uh, who who want to serve a God like that? That's very arrogant, sir. Right. That's, that's very high sedity, sir. Well, I'm sorry, sir. You have to kill me because I'm not doing it. You can go ahead and set up the, the lynching post because bro I ain't going to do it. We act like the racists do. You can take the black out of it and you'll see and put white. You couldn't tell the difference between these black conscious scholarship type people from the races. They all come from the same thing. It's all the, all the same. Matter of fact, when you talk about Kemet and the Hebrew Israelite or whatever, and there are some people who speak on this on YouTube. If you really break down and really do your research and really get into that, it's all black. But when it's all said and done, it came from the slave master. Mm -hmm. Right. Man, what, what you mean? Kemet didn't come from no slave master. Hebrew Israelite didn't come. Black Muslim didn't come from no slave master. What do a slave know about Kemet? When did we? Where did that come from? Who taught us that? Who taught us about being a Hebrew Israelite in the Bible? All that came from the slave master. You didn't know nothing about it. You couldn't even read and write for hundreds of years. Where the hell you get it from? Got it from them. I know Egyptians. That Kemet stuff came from them. Ain't no slave. We didn't. We. Never went to no damn Egypt. At the mm. root and the bottom of it, it came from the slave master. But he's a liar and a deceiver. You just rediscovering yourself. You now you keep you continue to believe in your master. Black power. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Your master giving you the black power. Um, you know all these different things. They are of a racist construct. They never, these labels did not come from dark skinned people. They came from the races. There's no dark skinned person or people or individual that I know of taught us these things. Caucasian people taught us that we African. Caucasian people told us that we black. It came from them. I don't see, I don't see no evidence where our people, our ancestors taught us these things. It came from them. And black and African and all these different things was designed to divide and conquer and cause confusion. And when you look at the black conscious community and all these different things, that's all you see is hatred, confusion, and division. Right. And all those that scream black African, they all divided, they all hate each other. That's exactly what you see because that's exactly what black and African and all that crap was designed for to destroy this dark skinned people and keep you all messed up. You tell you're me. Gonna try to, you're gonna try to get power out of something that was designed to take power away from you mm. and to destroy your soul. Right. But we've come here today to give you back your soul and be like that Jesus, raise the dead to life. So I was in this middle institution. I don't want to I don't want to stay on, on my uh tell the story, take too much time. I just want to try to be be brief because I, I need to write a book. I, I need to be like you, Sister Rashid. I need to write write a book and tell this because 
Yeah, you do. Tell your story. I, experience, I, I experienced a lot to say in that crap. Yeah, tell the story. We need, we need it. You'll be helping a lot of people. I'm very sure. Just by speaking, I know I've helped a lot of people. Right. Matter of fact, all over the world, there are people who have suffered under this thing called psychiatry, and we talk to one another. I talk to the other people in other other countries who are who have suffered the way I have done here in the States mm -hmm. with this medicine. Now look, they barely talk to me, these psychiatrists, these doctors. And Dr. Umar Johnson, I mean, he knows his stuff. I listen to what Dr. Umar Johnson has to say about psychiatry, and he's on point as far as that's concerned. Now his pan-Africanism stuff, I don't know, that's, that's here or there. But he's on point and he knows about that. But see, even long before, a Dr. Umar Johnson. Dr. Johnson talks about this. I lived it. He talked about it. Mm. I lived it in every day. I lived the life. I learned by trial and error and ex real experience. Why well, I learned about it in a book on the outside looking in. I, he was the doctor, I'm the patient. Mm. It's much different being on the patient side, believe that. So I'm in this mental institution for the, for the first day, and I'm sitting with my doctor who's going to heal my mental illness. And uh, they want to give me medicine, haven't even diagnosed me with nothing yet. As soon as I get into the place, are you ready to take your medicine? Are you ready to take your medicine? Matter of fact, here goes some of the medicine right here. I saved the medicine. I was cuffing it. Mm. This is a uh, Risperdal, and this is Zyprexin. What is it for? What is it supposed to do? <laughs> supposed to calm you down. Supposed to, I don't know. It's supposed to help, help you alleviate your del your, your delusions. Because remember, this fella did not steal from me. I'm making all this. Oh, it's it's a, it's, mm. it's a delusion in my mind. Right. So, so, so you, these, you didn't you didn't take the medicine at all? No, I never took the medicine. I cuffed it. Mm. And you saved it. How old is that medicine, if you don't mind me asking? It's about eight years old or something. That's a hell of a story right there. Wow. Because I don't you know, see do that. Well, well for, the first, for the first few years, I just outright refused to take the medicine. Well, you, you know, whenever you take that medicine, they put you on that sack. You know, it's going to mess with you mentally. So you probably would have conformed to whatever wishes they, was, they had for you. You know, you probably would have followed every instruction that they had if you was on that medicine. Right. Let me, let me tell you about these liars. The medicine that they was giving me, and I got this from a nurse, it wasn't even to the level where it would have been beneficial to me anyway. They just wanted to give this illusion that something was wrong with me. They did not want the other mental patients to see that I wasn't taking medicine. It wasn't even enough to do anything for me anyway. Look, little, little tiny doses of, of nothing. I didn't mm. want to take the nothing. I don't need this crap. But see, when you go to court, the judge don't know the difference between 2.5 or 10.5. He don't give a damn. Don't think he know, are you taking your medicine? He don't care if it's beneficial or not. The judge, are you taking your medicine? And you said, no. Well, you can take his ass back to the middle. I ain't letting him free. You need to take your medicine. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> my first day, right, I'm sitting there with the doctor. And uh, he's telling me about taking my medicine. And this brother, of which I, I got to know him real well, he was passing by, and he was he was doing this. His mouth was all crooked like this, and he was he was shaking. That's a, I forgot exactly what that's called. It's called some type of re, retard retard kinesia. I forgot exactly what the but it's a it's a it's a side effect of of this psychiatric medicine. It gives you the the, the shakes, and, and it it makes your mouth flip over, and and, and it makes you shake. He couldn't mm. even, the brother couldn't hardly drink a cup of coffee. I watched him drink a cup of coffee. He threw a coffee all over the place. He was trying to drink a cup of coffee. I'm like, what? They're telling me to take medicine. I'm looking at him. I'm like, hell no. No, no, no. Y'all got the wrong one up in here. Wow. And uh, so since I refuse to take the medicine, they're going to go to the court and ask a judge to try to force it on. So, so that's that. I had to deal with that later on. Now, mind you, They had asked the Caucasian judges to force, could they force medicine on me? And they refused 
because the judge didn't want to be responsible, you know, for, for the outcome. He, they didn't want to, because I wasn't doing anything dangerous. I wasn't hitting nobody, wasn't cursing nobody. I wasn't doing nothing. Mm. So, so the judge wouldn't, these Caucasian judges wouldn't do it because they didn't want to get caught up in that, that type of stuff. So they like, whatever. But now this Negro, this Negro judge who was married to a Caucasian woman, he had no, uh, I'll, I'll sign the order. The black man, <laughs> our friend. Cause you know, as soon as I found out it was a brother, I'm like, oh, it's a black dude. I, you know, he might give me some justice up in here. He was worse than all the Caucasian mm -hmm. judges put together. This nigga, he was determined. He was determined to put force medicine on me. Trying to prove themselves. Yeah, yeah. He was determined to force that medicine. But by but but by that time, I had learned some of this law stuff, and I filed a lawsuit against him. So he had to recuse himself. What? Why? I don't have to worry about this. Why you was inside? Uh, you filed the lawsuit. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna talk about that real quick too in a second. How I was able to get to the point because see, this is the thing about our this our thing about our struggle. And it's, they said in the in the in the religious text too, my people suffer because they have the lack of knowledge. The reason why I could have stopped all this stuff in its tracks from the very beginning if I knew and had the right information. I didn't know I was ignorant. Right, right. That's why they got me. Because don't you know, just the fact if you file what they call a writ of habeas corpus, if you file on some of this minor stuff that a lot of soul brothers and sisters get off into, if they were able to file something simple as what we call a writ of habeas corpus, many of them charges, they wouldn't even be bothered with you because they don't want to go to court and fight over it. But we don't know about stuff. We don't know nothing about no writ of habeas corpus. You know, we depend on these public defenders and these shyster lawyers that know they can't do a damn thing for you. They take all your money and know they couldn't do a damn thing for you to begin with. Mm. Negro lawyers too. Now, a side effect of that medicine also is it messes with your heart. Oh, wow. And it, it causes well, uh, a weight gain because you'll see a lot of these mental patients, they'll start gaining weight. But primarily, it does things to your heart. And it can cause mental disorder. It can make you flip it. Mm. It'll cause it. In the DSM-4, I think it might be a DSM-5 now, but the Diagnostic Symptom Manual of Psychiatry, they tell you they don't know what caused mental illness. Everything they talk about is a theory, but they're going to give you real medication for it. And some of these people who might be listening to this broadcast right now, whatever, they are taking this psych medicine and they don't know, they don't know, they don't know what it's supposed to be doing. It's a theory. Mental illness, this, they change, anything could be a mental illness. Just the fact that you're watching a video, it could be a mental illness. They can make a mental illness out of anything that's normal behavior, they can make a mental illness out of you. Mm. That's how they work. Dr. Lamar Johnson, he knows about it. He, he talks about it, and I concur with him 100% on those issues. He knows about that, and he's telling the truth about that. Mm. All psychiatric medicine basically is, is a tranquilizer. It's a tranquilizer to just shut you down and make you mellow. That's all that it basically is. And when you look at the chemicals, a lot of the chemicals they use in those psych medicine is the same type of chemicals they use when they go out in the jungle and shoot a bull elephant mm. and tranquilize a bull elephant. Right. Same stuff. Same type of crap. And they're giving it to people. And unless I confess to a crime and I must believe. Now, if I have a mental illness, why well, I have to believe in it? But they want you to, they want to, they want you to say out of your mouth, I believe that I have a mental illness and I did commit the crime that you charged mm. me. And if you don't, huh, you're a dead duck. They punish you. And they told me outright, well, I guess you're a dead duck. Well, I talked to a doctor, Dr. Minotti, Caucasian Dell, in his office. And he said, uh, hmm. He said, nobody's going to believe you anyway. So I'm going to tell you this, sir. 
you need to stop all this rebellion crap. Because at the time I was I was a black, I was still black Muslim, and I was talking about you know the injustices and all they don't they don't care about you can call these people crackers and devils and all they don't give a damn about all that stuff, it don't mean nothing to them. I got your ass. Right. They don't care, they don't care nothing about this stuff. You know, I'm calling them devils and and then crackers and they don't care nothing about this stuff. I got your ass. And he told me, he said, look, you need to stop all this rebellion garbage. And he pointed out the window. That mental institution where I was at, they have a cemetery. They don't use it no more. But there's a cemetery on the on the on the land where they used to, where people used to die and they bury them. And he pointed to that cemetery and told me, he said, where you want, he said, where you want your spot. Mm. That's what he told me. Wow. He said, I'm not gonna, you can tell. You can tell anybody you want to. You're crazy. Remember, you are mentally insane. You can tell them, anybody, whatever you want to. They're not going to believe you because you are insane. Remember that, sir. Now you need to take your ass back in there, start taking your medicine, and act right. That's what he told me. Of course I didn't. <laughs> That's what he told me. Right. Mm. The type of stuff that I had to deal with. I'm going to give you an example of the type of crap that I had to deal with. They tried to break me. They put me with a, a mental patient in my room. They found, they said they found this little guy in a zoo. <laughs> in a zoo? He, he was naked in a zoo. That's where they said they found this little this little Caucasian guy. And he he was, I don't know what happened to him in his life, but he was he was zippity. This guy, they put me in a room with him. This guy would take his hand. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm you know, I'm not trying to be vulgar, but he would <laughs> take his hand, put it up in his anus, pull out feces, and paint on the wall. Wow. Wow. And see, I was a clean guy. You know, I, I was raised in the nation of Islam. You know, we supposed to be clean. Plus, my mother was clean. I'm, yeah. You know, I, I do the clean deal. I'm not used to filth and, and nasty. This guy went up in his anus, pulled the feces out, and paint on the wall. That's what he did. And he will keep pulling at the he will keep pulling at the sink until he pulled the sink off the wall. Water started going all over the place. <laughs> this crazy dude. <laughs> yeah, that's, he would wear his pants. He, 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 he was really crazy, huh? Yeah, but see, but they put me with him on purpose, you know, to get to me, make me take medicine and act right. Mm -hmm. This guy would put on his pants and put on a belt. And tighten that belt up so much, the bottom part of his his legs would turn red, and you could see he stopping the flow of, of blood. Oh wow! He was he was a wacko. But you want to know something? What I did? I snatched that little dude and grabbed him, put him against the wall. I said, "Dude, you gonna clean up this crap? I'm gonna beat the hell out of you." That dude started cleaning all that stuff. I wasn't playing with that dude. I said, "You can play that crazy stuff all you want to. You ain't doing it with me." But I had to deal with a lot of people that was sort of out of their mind. Yeah. You could leave your bed. I would go play, play cards, come back to my bed, and somebody in my bed. Mm. I'm like, hey, hey, what, 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 you, what you in my bed? Is this my room? Is this your room? <laughs> you need to get out of my bed. I had a person that couldn't make it to the bathroom. For mm. some reason, my room looked good to him. Went went to my room and took a dump and a, and a, and a, and a, and a leak right there on my floor in front of my bed. I couldn't make it to the bathroom. I couldn't make it to the bathroom. What you gonna choose my room for? Wow, <laughs> that's, that's the kind of stuff I had to deal with, man. How long did you stay in there again? Close to 10 years. And how in the world did you survive all of that? <laughs> with the intact? I, I'm gonna get to that in a second. Wow. I had a, I had a client. I had a client, and me and this this guy, he was a Caucasian guy, and we was cool. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you, I was really, really even as, as wacky as many of those people was, I still was cool with them. We didn't have no problem. I understood that some of them had some problems, right? But basically, we was we was we was still cool. Mm -hmm. So I was cool with this guy. So I'm on the telephone, talking to one of my relatives, 
And uh, he came from out of nowhere. And he looked at me. He said, I'm so sick and tired of you. I, I, I wasn't tripping off him at first. I'm like, what the hell is Cap talking about? Still... You don't, he, he said, you don't turn your back on me. Did you hear what I said? You don't, because I was very popular too. There was nothing wrong with me. I was popular with the patient, the staff, everybody was, we was cool. I just hated the doctors. They were, they was my only enemy. So uh, <laughs> he didn't like that. He said, you might impress, you might impress all these other suckers. You don't impress me. You ain't no damn king. And he reached out and took a pool stick. He said, I'm sick of your crap. And he, I said, well, I gotta go. I had to get off the phone real quick. Oh. Mm. And uh, I can't describe it, <laughs> you know, but I had to do one of the Bruce Lee moves and I took the stick away from him. Mm. And, and uh, after I took the stick away from him, he went off and he went off and ran off somewhere. I'm like, what the hell wrong with this dude? Now, later on, this is what I found out. He told me them doctors was talking to him about me. And you know, when your mind is weak, when you gullible like that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they put in his, in his mind that I was his enemy. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Matter of fact, a lot of other patients, clients came and told me, they talking about you, man. They told me don't trust you and blah, blah, blah. Why, you know, my business, why are you discussing me about me with other patients? Why are you doing that? They was trying to get them to do their dirty work. They wanted me hurt physically. Right, right. But see, <clears throat> but it wasn't going to happen. Like I told you, I was basically cool with everybody. I seen uh, at least five or six people, I think five, five or six, I seen them die. They died from that medicine. Wow. There was a, there was a, a fella. He went to the nurse one night. And it was a it was she had about five minutes left on the clock. He went to the nurse. Something wrong with my heart. Something wrong with my heart. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And she looked at the dude and like, uh, I'm getting ready to get off. You're gonna have to deal with the next shift. Like I told you, that medicine, you know, it, it bothered most of those people that have problems, they have problems with their heart, blood pressure. That medicine causes that. And he was having problems breathing, clutching his heart. And she was like, you got to, uh, to, you got to wait for the next shift, sir. I'm like, wow. Mm. And then it was this, it was this Caucasian lady. She had AIDS and, and hepatitis C or something like that. But I heard them talking about her in the nurses station. The state of Missouri was tired of paying for her drugs. Cause you know, HIV medicine is very, very expensive. And they was tired of, of, of paying for her for her HIV drug. And I saw her go up to the nursing station. I need my, my medicine. I need my medicine. They never did give her her medicine. Mm. Before the week was out, she was dead. Oh, wow. And I saw the ambulance come. And I saw when they took her from, from her room and they put her body on there. And this is how wicked these people are. When all that was going on, they was, they was pointing at me like, you next. That's what's gonna happen to you. And you wonder, you wonder how do these people, this, I'm sitting there listening to you talk, talk about these people and I just always wonder what is going through the minds of the people that work in these institutions to the point where they become so inhumane. Oh, I, 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 just, I, I tell you this. I think it's just a job to them. I, right. I think they, That's it. I think they just clock in to go to work and it right. is what, it's about like these um elderly homes. This is a job to them. Yeah. They go there and they, Collect their check. They don't care. They, there's a there's a movie what called. The thing is, is these people like you said earlier? Everybody, you when you're born, you start dying. Yeah. You're right. Born, but do you think you're immune from death? You do you? I don't. This is <laughs> mind boggling to me. It really is. I just there's think that's movie. completely crazy. I don't know if you've seen this movie. It's called uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I heard of it. I have never. You haven't seen that movie? One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I live that. If you mm. watch that movie, uh, Jack Nicholson started that movie. I think it was 19, uh, 1970 something. And uh, the, the author of that book, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, he went undercover to research his book. 
and he became a psychiatric aide. That's what they call it. Mm. In, in psychiatry, you know, it's a psych aide. You know, in prison, it's a prison guard or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But in psychiatry, you know, it's a psych aide or whatever. He became a psych aide. And this is what he discovered. He said that they love to hire black people for those jobs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the reason why they like to hire black people for their job because black people suffer low self-esteem. This gives them an opportunity to feel better and greater over you know somebody that's lower, you know, and inferior. Mm. But that's, that's exactly that that's of, exactly what I saw. Hold on, that in and of itself is inhumane. Yeah, because what you're trying to do, like the slave uh, masters did, putting up these overseers, you're you're oppressing other. Here's the thing: what I'm saying. I'm against, let me be super clear. I deal with dark skin activism because I have my dark skin experience, but I'm against inhumanity. Right. If you are inhumane and you treating people a human being like they're not a human being, that's a problem for me. I mean, the only people that don't get a pass from me, I'll be up front. If you're a child molester, I'm done. Yeah. Right, right, right. That's what an old person, I ain't talking about you. Everybody else right. is me you you just you can't treat people inhumanely this is the, mm -hmm. this is just this is the problem human beings are causing problems for human beings we we mm -hmm. causing the problem because mm -hmm. what you just essentially said is the woman that had the hiv they killed her all you had Still to do was her medicine they killed her these people that's, it's mind-boggling i understand it but on an emotional level and i'm very emotional i am it's, it's i just i don't understand these people mentality you got to be an evil sadistic person to be behaving that way i don't understand it i, just, I only want my money i only want my money and my paycheck i want my money too she was causing, she was causing them <laughs> i mean there's other she's just a dollar sign i was worth six hundred dollars a day to them and see she's worth six hundred dollars a day too but see She's actually less because they have to spend all this money on her HIV medicine. Mm. That's the problem. I saw a guy because he was in bad health. Three facility. Nobody, nobody wanted to pay for his his uh, medicine and his care. So what they would do is toss him from facility to facility. You take him for a little while. I take him for a little while. You know, pass him around back and forth because nobody because he was a detriment to their money. So I imagine they want a whole lot of people getting rehabilitated out of that place, huh? No, it's not a place of, of rehabilitation. Mm. Matter of fact, I saw a young dark skinned sister one night. It was like one in the morning. She came banging on the institution. I need help. I need help. She tried. Here I am. I'm trying to get out. Mm. She trying to get in. She don't know what she was getting into. They called the police and took her away. But see, she wanted to come. She wanted to go in. She can't get no help. Here I am, don't need no help, and can't get out. Mm. But let me go ahead and continue this real quick. So I'm locked up in this place. At this time, I'm a Muslim. I'm still, I'm a, I, I just wasn't in the temple no more or whatever. I'm, I still believe in Islam. And I called to Allah. And I kept calling to Allah. And you find yourself alone in that situation. So it's just me and God. So I called to Allah for the first year. Lord ain't doing nothing. Called to Allah, Elijah Muhammad help me. Nothing. And you start thinking to yourself, you're all alone in that type of situation. And you like, only thing I've been trying to do in my life is try to do do good. You know, why am I in this stuff? Why, you know, why is this happening to me? Like I told you, I never, I never tried to harm, I never owned a gun, I never done nothing to nobody. Even here on YouTube, I, I, I'll come there and punch you in your eye and I'll kill you. And I, what did I do to hurt you? I, mean, I, I ain't done nothing to, to hurt you, man. But you have these people. You talked about Mr. Firecon. You need to be dead. <laughs> I made a video not too long about Umar Johnson. They really went crazy. Oh yeah. I had put it on Facebook, had 10 views. Next thing I know it was 100, 200, 300. what, what the hell? Because of what I had to say about Umar Johnson. Mm -hmm. You need to be dead. Umar Johnson is, is, is uh, 
He's going to change everything, whatever they was talking about. But uh, oh, you can't express so, your, opinion. your opinion. No, you can't express just like you. You can't. Oh, you can't express your, public, your opinion on YouTube. On YouTube, people coming on YouTube, coming on, YouTube on a public platform. You can't talk about them. That's that to me is insane. No, you can't, you can't talk about them. That's no, crazy. No, no, that don't make sense. So I'm calling God, Tyrone. I'm calling for God, and mm -hmm. I, I, I was I was a Muslim. It got to the point where I had to start calling on Jesus. <laughs> hey, I had to start calling on Jesus. That's well, the situation. Got, I mean, the majority of us believed in that. I, I, my granddaddy was a preacher. My uncle was a preacher. I mean, I believed in God. I mean, throughout my twenty-year marriage, you know, we was praying, going to church. So, you know, we got that history. So, yeah. So, yeah. But I was believing a lot at the time. I had to go back to where I came from. I had to go back to Jesus. I said, maybe, maybe Jesus is the way to go. But I cried to God. Nothing. One year passed, two year passed. Matter of fact, people who believe in Jesus and Allah didn't do nothing for me either. Right, right. Matter of fact, matter of fact, what they had to say was, well, what they said, you did the crime due to time. The problem is I didn't do the damn crime. It's a lie. It's all made up bull crap. I had my own family members talk about, well, you know, you deserve it. We told you don't mess with that guy. Don't get caught up in that stuff. You did it to yourself. See, in a situation like that, or when you become or, or you get in a dire situation, you begin to find out who your real friends are. Yeah. I was listening to uh, Will Smith, the rapper, the actor. And when he first was made, he, when he was first successful with the Fresh Prince, he, you know, he made a lot of money. And he shared it with a lot of people. No big deal. But you know, but soon that rap thing started getting dried up or whatever and he started getting to have some financial problem and he thought since he gave out all this money and whatever he thought these people would help him he was wrong mm -hmm. okay, wrong he couldn't find nobody to give him nothing and he was happy because he got a second chance with the fresh prince of bel-air i went to the nation of islam now it don't make no difference i'm not in, in the nation of islam but I work with you seven to nine years. I'm still your brother. I don't have to be in the nation of Islam. Aren't we supposed to be brothers and sisters? They told me, well, brother, that's what happened to you when you leave Allah. What that has to do with me and you being <laughs> brothers? We're supposed to be brothers. Don't you know that? That really hurt me. Because they teach that we are brothers and sisters. We're supposed to be family. And I went to them, well, brother, you know, when you... When you know a lot, a lot chastise you. You know, the hell with you, nigga. I'm out. But that's how they did. Family. Here I am. You know, I wasn't broke in the middle of I still had three, almost three grand in the bank. And I would ask some of my family members, you know, could you, you know, I'm not asking you to go in your pocket. Could you bring me a bag of chips? Could you bring me a soda with my money? <laughs> Sorry, can't, can't help you. Mm. But look at this. Now, when I get out of the middle institution, who want me to join the nation of Islam? Mm. Brother, you ready to come back to the nation? They still ask me to this day. Why would you want a person in your organization that you know don't believe that stuff no more? Why would you want me to even be around you? But they still ask me to this day. And then my family couldn't, do, couldn't bring me a bag of chips. But as soon as I get out and get on my feet, mm. everybody wants special favors. Could you do this for me? Could you do mm -hmm. that for me? That's so you I never mean. know who your, you never know who your friends is. But above all, I'm asking this God, what did I do to deserve all this? I didn't do nothing to nobody. But, and I had to ask myself, what am I going to do here? Because Elijah Muhammad, of whom is my spiritual father, he was the only father, real father I ever had when I was a little boy. And I only know about him in a book. But he taught me through that book. He said, he said, you cannot, do not submit to a lie. I can make things easier on myself if I just bow down to what these devils say, which is a damn lie. It's a lie. So I had to make a promise to myself because also in that religion, 
It says, when you give your word, your word is bond, and you would die before your word shall fail. And I gave myself, and I gave word to myself that I'm not going to submit to this lie. So I decided, I don't know when it was, but I decided that it was time for me to die. Mm. I just had to accept that reality. It's, it's just time to die because I'm not going to submit to this lie. Mm. I'm not going to do it. You can put all the feces on the wall you want to. You can do all, you all, you know, they, they would uh, stop my family from coming to see me, you know, stop family visits. I love to play basketball. Well, he, he, he won't take his medicine. He, he can't go play ball today. Whatever. But you know, he go, but you know, I, I don't I don't care too much for his religion is concerned itself. But I do remember certain phrases. It says in, in the scriptures, it talks about that God puts us on a puts a burden on us, no burden on us that we can't bear. And in the Quran, it talks about how Allah tests us. And in the scriptures, it talks about Mm. You are in dire straits to put on the armor. So I decided I'm going to die. Let me die as a warrior. So I had to suit up and decided to put on my, my armor. And there's only one person I can depend upon. I can't depend on no God. I can't depend on believers in God. I mm. can't believe in, in Negroes. I contacted everybody in the city. I, co I contacted every black lawyer, the NAACP, the Urban League, everybody. These people wouldn't even reply. So I'm on my own. Mm. It's just me and the spirit and the strength that I find in myself. Right. You ain't going to break this nigga. Because after a certain period of time with, with these people messing with me, it was no longer even about medical treatment. They wanted to break me. Yep. They wanted to show that I can be broken. That's what the bottom line was. They passed me from doctor to doctor. Each doctor, don't worry, I, I can I can deal with him. Mm. Next thing you know, uh, I, 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 get him away from me. Get him. They just passed me around because one of them thought they were smarter or could do better than the other. You ain't breaking me. And that's what that's another thing about Elijah Muhammad's teaching. Elijah Muhammad made me a very strong person because in the uh Quran or in Islam, you are taught to fear. Nobody except God. So anything that they did, I didn't give a damn. Bring it. And hell, at that point, I didn't give a damn about God. Mm. So bring it. But I'll tell you this. Now, I'm going to bring this to conclusion. And, and uh, we're going to talk about soul, the, the bringing this, this, this soul liberation thing. No, that's a hell of a soul liberation story right there. That's, <laughs> that's it. I'm saying. Oh, I'm telling you, it's, it's rough. You really need to write that book, like for real. Take some time, man, because your story. Oh yeah. Help a lot of people. I know people. I, I've been on here sending this link out to people that I know that deal with uh, this type of issue right now. Because what I see is a person you're here online talking to the world that came out on top. That is yeah. amazing to me. I'm like, whoa. That's a hell of a story right there. That's completely awesome. But you know, Thank so you. I couldn't I love it. come out on top until I got to the point where I was able to find the correct knowledge. Because I can have all the armor in the world. I can have all the inner strength in the world. Mm -hmm. But without that proper knowledge, without the, without the, 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 the absence of ignorance, mm -hmm. There's nothing I could mm. do. It was inevitable that I would right. been I would have been in that cemetery. But I tell you this. Now this is what happened. Mm. I'm gonna tell you why I love soul sisters. I'm gonna tell you why I love the black woman. And I'm gonna tell you the reason why. I don't give a damn what what they do or what black women say. Soul sisters. Say. I don't give a damn about that. I'm gonna tell you why I love y'all, Rashida. <laughs> tell us why. Yeah. I want to hear. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you why. I got Negroes always on my case. You Captain Sabo. You're damn right. I'm Captain Sabo. Right. That's what a man's supposed to do. Cause my woman ain't supposed to be no damn hoe. 
I'm supposed to stand right. for her. I'm supposed to build for her. I'm supposed, I'm supposed to protect her. And if she got a problem, because I'm the problem. She's weak and she's wacky because I'm weak and wacky. And it's the leader of the household. So if he's a leader of the household, look where he's had, look where he's led you. If you was the leader that you claim, she wouldn't be in that condition. Mm -hmm. And then she turns the passage to the children because you're a weak ass Negro. Living in the house with your masa. You won't respect as a man living in another man's house. But at the same time, if your son stay in your house, uh, you a man, you need to get out. But here you are, you living with the man. Because you know, at one time, we used to call the white folks the man. Here you are mm. living with the man. And you ain't acting, you're not doing no different than your son. And you want your son or your daughter and your children out of the house. But you're going to stay in the house with your master. And you think that that's a good thing. You want your son and your daughter to get out your house because they need to find, they need to learn responsibility and mature and be on their own. But you living with your master, but don't, you don't feel, you don't feel as though it's, that's good for us as a people that we need to get out of Masa house. Well, Masa, uh, this is my house too. How in the hell is it your house? You don't run nothing. You don't make no laws. You don't control a damn thing. You pay equal taxes. You will die for this house, but you don't get nothing out of it. So why stay in the house? If this was a individual situation, you would get out of that house because ain't nobody in their right mind going to live in a house, pay equal uh, utilities and all this, and you don't run nothing. You'll be out. You're not going to stand it. But with my son, we don't have no choice. Why you don't think about that with your ragged ass roommate that you got? Or that ugly ass wife that you married that you don't want to want? You don't stay there with her. You don't feel that way. But with my son, we, we got to work it out. <laughs> we got to cut. That's how we, that's the attitude when it comes to them. Yep. Get out but amongst ourselves. Mama, we too, we too prideful to do that. Well, first of all, my mama, my mama black. She's a soul sister. My sisters are soul sisters. See, they, they black. I love black women. My aunts is black. I love black women. I don't give a damn if all the men died on the planet. Wouldn't bother me at all. And just leave me with all the women. I wouldn't care. It wouldn't bother me now. I don't need no. I don't need no man in my life. I don't need no man to teach me how to be a man because you should know that by nature. But it's right. gotten to the point where the very nature of young males have been destroyed. I agree with Dr. Omar Johnson on that. But he don't realize he got a problem. That's what he don't realize. Mm. You got a problem. How are you going to teach these young men about being a man when you are messed up? You got a problem, sir. You saw what he did with Sarah Sun said he went mm. crazy and ballistic. Mm -hmm. Is that the, is that the behavior of man, sir? Especially in his position. So he has a problem. How are you going to tell somebody else when you can't even deal with your own sickness? But when I was in this mental institution, and even all my life, black women, these soul sisters always stepped up to protect me from my mama to strangers, always, always have done that. When I was in that, in that institution, the sisters, well, nothing was wrong with me. And of course, as you know, women are attracted to men, men are attracted to women, and I don't care if it's a jail or a school or a mental institution, if you look nice, talk nice, a woman gonna be attracted to a man. Here I am. I'm not a bad looking dude now. <laughs> I'm a try, you know, I'm in this middle institution. You got all these sisters here. They lonely. Man in the community. <laughs> you got one lady. That's the, that's another truth. That's another part of the liberation we need to admit. Yeah. That, that's a that's a point that needs to be addressed with our black men in these institutions, um, maybe mental and in, in prison. And it's a natural occurrence. It's, I mean, yeah. it is what it is. We need to really look at that in detail and in depth. I got a lot to say about that. But go ahead. I'm glad you brought that point up. I'm glad you yeah. brought that point up, not me. Yeah. It's just like it's just like somebody was telling me, because I got this little crush on the on the little uh on my sister Terry Ellis from Envo, right? She's a superstar, Envo, whatever. And uh, you ain't got a chance in hell. She's a woman, she's a human being. I don't care what kind of celebrity she's supposed to be or whatever. That don't have nothing to do with it. 
Oh, don't. Give me some time. You don't know what the hell might happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't. You yeah. don't know. Because yeah. even when I was when I was in that mental institution, I I wasn't lonely. Let's say that. <laughs> I, 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 they would not allow me to be lonely. Oh I'm not gonna get vulgar and go off into it, but I was never lonely. This is gonna be chapter four. <laughs> I, remember, I can't wait to read this book. <laughs> but those sisters, we had a, 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 you know, they liked me, and they also knew what kind of guy I was. See, in that middle institution was a dangerous place. There were people, there was women who had their arms broken. They was beating up them patients oh, would kick their ass. But they knew just being around me wasn't gonna happen because I was very protective of them. And I always, see, I, coming from a nation of Islam background, I always, I'm, I'm always security minded. So even though I'm talking and joking with them, I'm always watching around. So you're not gonna sneak up on me and punch me in my mouth, it ain't happening. Mm -hmm. And they liked being around me and they knew they were safe being around me because I kicked them patients ass real quick. There was nothing wrong with me I play basketball almost every day in shape. I hurt you, no doubt about it. And they knew it. The, pa the patients didn't bother those sisters. And all those sisters helped me due to their kindness and their caring. Some of them had blue hair. Some of them had red hair. They had weeds. They had all this stuff that these Negroes complained about. All these sisters had that. But they protected and cared for this brother in this place. And even outside this outside of that place, black women have supported and cared for me when I really need it. So I'm not going to let them demonize soul sisters. I'm not going to do that. Now there was one sister that I really had a crush on. She was, little, she was younger than me. Tiffany, that was her name. And we had a real thing going on there. And uh, at the time, she was supposed to be dating one of the other men, staff, whatever. And I had, we had just finished playing basketball. And uh, I came around the corner, and this dude had her jacked up with her winter coat on up against the wall. Mm. And I told that dude, if you don't get your hands off of her, we're gonna have some serious problems here, bro. And he told me, you better mind your damn business. I said, this is my business. Now, if you want to jack her, you should have jacked her out in the parking lot somewhere where I couldn't see her. You think I'm going to allow you to jack her up and I'm right here? Dude, if you don't let her die the next two seconds. And the dude, like, almost three times bigger than me. He used to run around lifting all these weights. Or I don't give a damn about all that. We're going to throw down today if you don't let, let, the, let her down. And he let her down. He's talking a bunch of noise. I said, yeah, as long as you let her down, you can talk all the crap you want. But I was very protective of, of Tiffy. Everybody knew that. And a lot of these sisters was jealous of my relationship with her because I was very protective of her. Love Tiffy. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I love Tiffy. But unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond our control, my control and the situation I was in, there was no future for me and Tiffy. So, and it, it didn't turn out too good, but you know, I love Tiffy. I love Lotto's sister. You're not gonna hurt these women up in here, not with me around. Mm. But really what caused me the whole, the whole thing to turn was that I began to help others. I want y'all to listen, listen. I began to help other people. I don't give a damn what their race was. I don't care if they was Caucasian or Mexican or what the hell, whatever the hell they were. One of the Caucasian guys came to me one day and he said, uh, man, I know you know how to, to read and write well. Could you help me with this, this paperwork from my lawyer? I'm like, uh, what, what, is, what is that? Some kind of paperwork supposed to help me get out of here. So I helped him with the paperwork, but I'm like, damn. 
if that we we both in the same type of situation, maybe the paperwork can help me get out. Actually, we were in different situations because he was in he was in there by he was put in there by guardian. I was I was put in the mental institution due to a criminal charge. Two different situations, but that was the first sign that guided me, directed me to my to the real information that I needed in order to get the hell out of there. And then it was a brother who was in the same type of situation. I helped him with some legal work. And I began, you know, through trial and error, I began to put this stuff together. And I began to go to the library and check out the law books. Now, mind you, the law books have been there for seven, eight years. But if you don't know, you ignorant. So what? It's, it's useless. So what? Hmm. See, that's our problem. They always, the, the, the information was always there. I didn't know nothing about it. So I began to go to the library and the crackers, these devils, noticed what I was doing. It's really against the law. They took those law books out of the library. Sure did. I learned how to file my own crap. I was not successful when I started filing and they was laughing. Mind you, through during my whole stay in this place, I heard nothing but laughter. Dude, you're going to die here. And they're laughing about it. Dude, you're going to die here. And they was laughing when they took the bodies out of the institution. They was laughing. Mm. That's you, man. <laughs> That's you. And a lot, of those, a lot of those males really didn't like me because those sisters was always around me, and they didn't like it. I'm like, mm. why are you guys hating on me? I'm locked up. Y'all got tons of women out there, millions, that you, you free. And they hating on me because of the attention these women are giving me in this institution. Mm -hmm. They was always hating on me. They thought because I'm in a middle institution, I'm not supposed to be able to play basketball. I was whooping the hell out of them, boy. You can't mess with me, man. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a little fat right now, but I can still shoot, get some of this, get this 20 pounds off me. Bad boy. <laughs> I'm a bad boy. Somebody told me, uh, I think it was in the chat room or somewhere, you can't play no basketball. We're going to see. We're going to see. Because I know I can shoot. I went out to the, to the yard not too long ago. I can still shoot if I can't do nothing else. I can still shoot. But uh, yeah. But that was the beginning. That was the beginning of, of, of the turning my situation around. And I began to file. And pretty soon it got to the point where uh, it was a Caucasian lady judge, a woman. I love women. It was a woman. She she, she told me after the the, the 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 hearing that I had, she 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 uh wanted me to come and approach the bench, and she told me she said, "Look, sir, it's quite obvious you're a very intelligent man and whatever, and you you should not be in this institution. I understand that you've been there almost ten years. I cannot help you. I cannot help you this time. But if you give me what I need." In order to get you out here, I'm going to end this nightmare for you. I said, yes, ma'am. Mm. It's a Caucasian lady. Um, so the next time I came around, all my I's was dotted. All my T's was crossed. And my lawyer, who was a woman, and she was very pretty to be a Caucasian lady, she told me on, on that hearing day, she said, she told me, she said, you know you're getting out here today. I said, yeah, I know I am. I know I am. But them devils, them devils wanted to hold on me so much, the judge told them, all right, I'm getting ready to let this guy loose. They didn't want to hear it. We had to stay almost eight hours arguing over why I need to stay in the middle institution. She already basically told them, I'm getting ready to let the guy out. But they have the right, they have the right to, 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 to put their little argument. And we was there for almost eight hours. So, so what did you have to do? Did you have to prove that you didn't do something wrong, or did you have to prove that you didn't deserve to be there? Or I had to show, I had to show with clear, convincing, overwhelming evidence that I do not have a, a mental illness, and I don't, and I don't need medication. So, what about what you was charged with to be put there? Was that cleared up? That that have, they don't have nothing to do with it no more. That's that's what that's expunged. Really, you don't have to. You don't talk about that issue no more. Really, that's that's a mental institution thing. As far as the law is concerned, only thing the law want to know is, are you a danger to yourself and others? Do you have okay. a mental illness? Do you have... So you, you, you were charged by the court with a crime. 
Right. And your punishment was the mental institution. Right? That's not punishment. That's medical treatment. That's oh, not punishment. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's medical so treatment. You weren't really punished by the crime. They, they said you had to be uh, mentally, they had to right. look at you mentally because of what you did. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, so, and your paperwork proved that there was nothing wrong with you mentally. Right. And, and a lot of these people come that don't like me or whatever. And they keep talking about, that's why you're crazy. Now, you're going to believe the cracker when he said that I'm, that I'm crazy. But I also have the paperwork to show that this man has no mental illness. He does not need medication. And the judge told me, she said, you know, when we let you out of here, you're not going to get no support at all. You're on your own. I said, cool. I said, I don't give a damn. Listen, I, I, I have to rewind. Yeah, go ahead. So what, what, was he, what was you initially charged with to be sentenced to the mental institution? Uh, 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 extreme stalking, something to that effect. So with the extreme not just stalking? Not just stalking, but a, a, a high, the, the highest mm -hmm. level of stalking that you can think of. Okay, but that wasn't that wasn't warranted for a jail sentence. It was it was it was it was the, the correction for that was the mental institution. Right. So whenever they put you in the mental institution, you yourself went and, and researched the information that you needed to undo whatever decision that they, they made right. about you. Right. But I didn't have in the beginning, I did not have that type of information. You know, I was okay. ignorant. So I had to, you know, I had to basically depend on a public defender or depend on the mental institution, which the public defender's office and the mental institution, they all the same clique. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They all, all these boys, the, the, you know, the, the police, the judges, all these people, all, the, all of them work together. The prosecutor and the, defend, def, uh, the, the uh, defense attorney, all of them, most, many of them went to school together. They know each other. They go right, to parties right. together. And they make, you know, like if you was in trouble, they might, they might be at Thanksgiving dinner and talk about your case. <laughs> well, what about that Tyrone Thompson? <laughs> I think he needs another three years. Okay, we will give him another three years. But now, you know, let him go. You know, on the, on the fourth year. But I, I might jack. I, I might jack. <laughs> they talk about. That's how they do. Well, what, what did you have to tell them to get them to undo whatever they was doing to you? Because it seemed like they was going to keep you there until you croaked. Well, the information, so how did you the information was over. You have to show with clear, convincing, overwhelming. The, the, the key word is overwhelming, with no right. doubt. I have no problem. You know, uh, I was not taking medicine. Mm -hmm. As the whole time I was there, I did nothing dangerous. I didn't even cuss nobody. I didn't do nothing. Mm -hmm. They could not prove that I was a danger at all, period. They can't say oh, that I needed you, medicine. Why, why you, the reason you was treating, getting treated because you had a mental problem, uh, of course, right. even supposedly, but while you was there, you had to display the problem that you was getting treated for and you never displayed any of those mental right. issues. Okay. Yeah. Now the thing about this too now, remember here, when you get a mental illness, you have it for life. It just don't disappear. Mm -hmm. But now, if that's the case, how come in the end, when all this came to conclusion, they said the court, the same court that said that I had a mental institution, which you cannot get rid of, you have it for the rest of your life. They say he has no mental illness. He does not need medicine. Mm. This is all bogus. The whole thing is a bunch of garbage, it's a bunch of crap. But when it's all said and done, I stuck to my guns and they told me uh, prior to that, they said, look, sir, nobody without, without our authority or approval, nobody gets out of here. It, it has not happened in a hundred years. That's what they told me. Mm. Mm. So on December the 7th, 2007, mm. I, I broke their record. Oh, wow. Because I was able to get out, of there, out from among them and without their damn approval. So your 100 year winning streak is over. <laughs> Sir. December 7th, 2007? Is that what you said? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, I was gonna play with them and, and, and whatever. I just like the hell with. It. I'm just I'm 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 out of I'm I'm out of five thousand. And I think I was talking to you uh, not too a few months ago, brother Tyrone. I was telling you the sad thing about all this is that when you are in a situation like that, locked up like that, 
you can actually get to the point where you become institutionalized and right. you become comfortable in this. Mm. So my question is, when it comes to soul brothers and sisters in this nation, what about us? This is all we ever know. We, we talk about freedom. We've never known what freedom is. See, the reason why I could fight the way I could fight in my own individual situation because I understood what it was to be free. Right. But what if I was a baby born in the middle institution? Mm. And that's right. the only life I know. What is right. that? So you know what? I, I mean, yeah. It, I mean, your, your your story is fascinating because you can you can just uh, lay that over the, the the black community issue, right? Yeah. You're there. You're being complacent. You don't know nothing about that library. You right. don't know nothing about those books. Right. And that's the way our community is. Yeah. Uh, right now, if you look at it, we don't see no no information. We don't know no. And we don't even care if the information is over there. So something is stopping the community at large from looking at, looking over there in that library and getting the information that we need to come up as a community. Right. Something right. There, there's a barrier there, and, and uh, I mean, of course, we people like you and I and, and, and Mr. Shearer here, we know the information is there, but the, as a community at large, they don't they don't even they don't care or they don't want to know or they're just complacent with the way we are, you know. And, and your situation, something, you know, I guess it was the, the first guy to ask you for help, and then another guy asked you for help, and you you had a right, peek inside right. of that 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 uh that library and seen the information that was there, and and that showed you that gave you a route, you know, to to actually come up out of there. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing, man. It was Remind a Caucasian woman. I'm sorry. It was a Caucasian woman. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that, uh, that gave me after they took the, the books out of out of the library it was a caucasian lady who was going to washington university uh she was studying black studies whatever she was the one that gave me a a, a, a short a short version of the of the statues that i needed to to, to know she brought that to me mm -hmm. and matter of fact she was the one that introduced me i didn't know i did not know who dr francis Cress wilson was Hmm. She gave me the book called the ISIS papers. ISIS papers. That's right. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, she gave me some other uh, that book. Uh, they first came to America. What was that book by Ivan Sonoma or something like that? Came before Columbus. Yeah, yeah, that book. She gave me that. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, I just love womanhood. I, I told you, women come and do things for me. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I got to stand for them. <sighs> what I need. Mean, when I need something, when I'm really in trouble, you know, they come for me. Now, as far as my personal life and these relationships, that's too hot sometimes. But as far <laughs> as my interaction with womanhood, I don't have no problem. We we right, done right, that. Right. Matter of fact, when I first came to YouTube, the majority of my subscribers were soul sisters and, and soul sisters that had, you know, that was involved in interracial relationship. That was the majority of my subscribers. You would think it might have been black men or or something like, but it wasn't. It was women. Mm -hmm. Always been women. Mm. Like I told you, I don't need no man in my life. Mm. <laughs> I don't but you so how could you call so how could you call me gay and I don't want no man in my life? Right, right, right. They call you gay. I don't want you around. I'm pretty happy. If I had nine sisters Rashidas around me, I'd be in heaven. It's all it's all good. I'd be drinking yeah. some green vegan juice. I wouldn't like that too much. Though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what, what's up with all these vegetables? <laughs> they, they keep you alive and help. But you know what? I just wanted to chime in real quick. Um, yeah. But uh, brother Tyrone just said about black people yeah. having this attitude of not wanting to go get the information. It just reminds me of it, it. This is what we're trying to break out of, and that's why I'm so happy that you're here telling your story because this is you, what you just described is soul liberation to me. I ain't know I was yeah. gonna get this treat. I think this is awesome. This is concept of, of nihilism, where mm. a people feel hopeless that there's mm. no, nothing that could be done about their situation, and that reminds me. You saw you talked about Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. Um, uh, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, the author's name, I should know his name, but it escapes me right now. But that book really kind of explains why uh, oppressed people of any color mm -hmm. 
have that belief that, oh man, they've been oppressed so much that it becomes a psychological thing. Thank God for Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, yeah. because she is one of the people too that um, has informed my worldview more than probably in my top five. That really made me want to just swing and fight mentally. Mm -hmm. Because once you, once like you said, uh, Brother Tyrone, that's so important. Out of that, and you begin to realize that you can do something about your situation. It's not hopeless. And I think that comes through studying and reading and learning and understanding. You do get to a soul brother liberation, mm. soul liberation. Like this is so, I mean, I, I'm just like, just listening to you talk. It's like, like, I didn't know what, what was going to happen today. I didn't know what we were going to talk about, <laughs> but now I completely understand well, I'm going to say completely, but I have a better understanding of your thought process and how you have been liberated because of the 10 years of struggle that you have gone through. And I hope that people watching this will understand that you can break out of whatever oppression that you're in. You can, it can be done. You just yes, have to right. get the tools. Like you said, you got to have the tools and be willing right. to assess those tools. We can't be lazy. I don't want to call it that because like I said, I know that there's some people out there they just been so beat down by life people just been yeah. beating them and beating them yeah. so they just feel so hopeless but it's always as long as you're alive it's always hope so i think i think this your story is like so inspiring and i hope you write a book and speak on it in more platforms to help other people because they need to hear this message like it's it's i've been sharing this link like mad crazy the whole time we've been on here i've been sharing it like crazy so I got some people watching you right now. I just want you to know a brother just sent me shout out to you. You know who you are. Are you watching? He just said, oh, I like him. He's on point. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's rough. It's, it's rough when we have to go through things. But sometimes what they say, every, every dark cloud has a silver lining. Just because mm -hmm. we go through something that's extremely negative like that, doesn't mean that there's a something positive that we can get out of it. You don't have to suffer like I've done in order to learn this lesson. There are many people story that I've listened to. I learned because they already went through something and I learned from that. You don't have to go through what I had to go through. But also at the same time, I'm telling you because of this experience and because we as a people are in the same similar circumstance, you can use that same type of strategy to liberate yourself from up right. out of this horrid condition that we're in right now. And right. it will work. You have to have the right information. With all this information that these people have, clearly it's not the correct information. You don't use a, a plumber's manual to fix your car. It's not going to work. And that's what we find. I mean, we got all this different information. But it's the wrong information. It's not solving our problem. Matter of fact, really, it's making it worse because it causes division and hatred among us. Right, right. And you know what? Um, Sister uh, Rashida uh, touched on it uh, earlier when she was talking about economics and, and, and financial mm -hmm. literacy, right? And if you if you look at the if you look in the Bible, it'll tell you that it uh, it's easier for a I don't know, something to get through the eye of the needle, a camel to get to it, than it is for a rich man to get in the right. heaven mm -hmm. or give Caesar back what is his. Mm -hmm. What's that doing is that subconsciously telling us that believe in this, this doctrine that money is not important. But if you just look around society, you can see that economics is very important and it plays a key role into the success of any society. But we don't look at that this, this economics as something that we need to do or something that is relevant to 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 help us out of this situation. And and what and the reason that I'm bringing that up is that's part of that knowledge that is probably locked locked away over there in that library that we ain't even trying to look at or figure out how to use it or whatever the case may be. So I mean, it, it's 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 important that we 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 at least try to identify what could help us out of. Uh, whatever this 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 is that we're in you know yeah I, I concur i concur with that matter of fact i made a video and the title is uh what was the title 
uh, the real solution for problems of black people, something to that effect, mm -hmm. whatever. And I get very, actually, I haven't got any, any response from it at all. It gives a breakdown on what we need to do in order to solve this problem, but it cannot work without unity. We have to have unity, but we cannot have unity unless we come under one umbrella. So yeah, the second part, the second, part and the conclusion of our talk today is how can we come under one umbrella how can we how can we really unify because clearly now black and african all these different things it's a possibility they could have worked but clearly they don't because you have many dark-skinned people the descendants of slaves born in america having dark skin clearly many of, of us don't like to be called black i ain't black they don't want to be called African American. You know, all these different names that we come with, I, I don't like it. You know, we act like children. I, I, don't, I don't like that. I, that tastes nasty. I don't like that. So what can we come up with where we can unite under one umbrella? And I kept thinking about this, and my conclusion come, come to me was a little word that we use as a people not too long ago. In fact, we was using this label, this description, at the same time we was hollering black power, uh -huh. we was hollering soul power at the same time. <laughs> so you had Soul Train, Aretha Franklin, and I hope she's doing all right. I heard last time information I got on her, she's sick. Mm. But uh, she was the queen of soul. Soul Train. Soul food, but is that what soul really is about? Is it just about music? Is it is it just about some food? Then you had the Funky Diva, my girls involved. The full name was the Funky Divas of Soul. So, what is it? How can James Brown, Aretha Franklin, and the Funky Divas? What is soul food if it don't exist? What is it? What is it? So my thing, mm. look, soul, this word soul, brother, soul system, that comes from our people. It's the natural progress and development of a people or even an individual to bring forth your own uniqueness. It don't make no difference if you are comedic or a black Muslim or African or Christian. It's the natural development of you finding and wanting something on your own. You love your mother, hopefully. You love your father and your parents. But you don't want to drive their car. You want your own. You want to do your own thing. You want to get out of their house and do your own thing and do things your way, express your uniqueness. So soul comes from up out of us i don't know what the origins are but it comes from up out of us because when you talk about the people of soul soul brothers and sisters there's only one people that can pop up not nobody from africa nobody from egypt nobody mm -hmm. from china you have to be a descendant of slaves born in america that's who the people of soul are it's you so what is it it's like an orphan or a person who is adopted. They may never know who their parents are. And we are in the same situation like, we don't know who our parents are. We really don't know who our ancestors are. We really don't know. We just out here, we don't know. So if the adopted person or the uh, orphan cannot really find a home, cannot find their family or roots, what do they do? They begin to create their own from scratch. So they marry a person and they begin their own little family and it starts all over again and they build from there. So here we are in America and from up out of our loins come mm -hmm. this concept of soul. And it's just not soul food. It's just not music. It's the identification of a people. And if you live during the 70s, like I did, 
I've never heard nobody. They might have a problem with being called black. They might have a problem with being called a black Muslim or committed. I've never heard nobody say, I don't have no soul. Right, right, right. Never. Right. never. So you can take soul and use it as an identification for all of us because you can be committed, you can be a black Christian, you can be whatever you want to, but as long as you can identify, I am a descendant of a slave born in America, having dark skin, you can come up under this one umbrella called soul and build on that platform. And under that platform, you take the positives from everywhere, wherever we are at, like, like so for instance, the bean pie, that came from the Nation of Islam. So brothers and sisters like bean pie. We got that from the Nation of Islam. There's a certain cologne we might like to wear. We got that from them brothers on the, on the corner, them Hebrew Israelites. You put all the stuff up under one umbrella, the positive things that we like and we love, put it on, up under on one umbrella, and we move based on that platform of what all that we can agree under this word called soul that comes from us. You can't say, I, I don't want to be with that Negro. No, it didn't didn't come from me. It come from up out up out of our loins. You keep talking about well the ancestors did and the, the ancestors gave us soul. They did not give you African. They did not give you black. But they gave you soul. What is better? What label could be better than being from the tribe? of soul or the nation of soul when soul is the essence of life and soul is what brings and is the is the is the uh aura of life what other label could you think is better i i, I like being committed Kemet is dead it's not life it's over with five thousand years ago soul is life living moving progress forward Kemet cannot move forward it's over it's over for Kim. Or you want to be a Hebrew Israelite, some people you never met, and you dress up in these costumes and things that you like, but you never met them. But soul comes from your own people, and you think that Kim or copying some Arabs, I'm a black Muslim. You want to be everything and, and accept everybody's label except what you label yourself. Your ancestors said and gave us soul. It comes from your ancestors. You're going, to, you're going to tell them that you don't want their gift? They are living right now to this day. Your mother and father lived during the 70s, came up in the 70s. They were soul brothers and sisters. They brought that to us. They gave that to us. They don't know. At during that time, what, how necessary and how important that label was but we can take it now today because of where we are and we can build on that and we create something that is unique only to our own and the reason why i like involve the funky divas of soul is because as long as they've been on the scene they keep telling people we represent soul music and technically soul music has been dead since the late 90s you don't hear about it. They got rid of it and got rid of soul music and turned it into R&B and this other garbage because they're keeping their soul. One of the one of the sisters said, "I wish we could find more soul songs to sing." That's another reason why I like them because they're keeping that alive. That's part of us. Why can't you build on that? And when you become a soul brother and a soul sister, it takes us up out of that racist trap of racism. Because I can talk however I want to talk, but because I don't talk, because I avoid the word black and I avoid the word Africa and all that stuff, you can't call me no racist. I'm a soul brother. Mm -hmm. I can represent the same thing, but you can't you can't even you can't even begin to accuse me of being a racist. Racist what? I'm a soul man. Remember that song? I'm a soul man. You own the business and you're around. See? We become, and using these labels that come from a, like the sister said, from a racist paradigm, we act like them. Nothing but Oreo cookie, black power Negroes. 
Look how look look how sick we are. I'm gonna give you an example. Diamonds is a girl's best friend. Like diamonds, don't you? Man, I wish I had me some diamonds right now. I'll be, be blinging right now. Put me on some diamonds and some gold. <laughs> what is a diamond? A diamond ain't nothing but a damn rock. It ain't alive. Mm. You can, you're gonna you're gonna choose. I'm gonna choose a diamond over Sister Rashida. You got many people. The hell with Rashida. <laughs> I got my diamonds and my bling bling. Oh yeah. You're gonna choose a diamond over a human being because you have the mind. You have the mind of a racist, just like your slave master. You need to get up out of that and leave that that whole thinking, that mentality alone because the people that we're living in and being controlled by, they are materialistic. And their, their whole premise, their, their only thing they think about is material, physical things. Even when they talk about Africa, they don't talk about how they love Africa. They always talk about, we need to get our resources, the resources of Africa. That's what they talk about. What about the people? The people themselves is a resource. Matter of fact, even the cracker would tell you the most important resource is the people themselves. We don't know what it is to be a, a human being. We have their mentality. And you cannot get, you cannot move forward. And it makes no difference if you build your own nation. It don't make no difference what you do. As long as you have that mentality, you're going to suffer the same consequences over and over again. Your situation will not improve because you're thinking like them. Your idea and your picture of success is just like the races. Success is a big car, the houses, and all this other stuff, which is nothing wrong with a decent house. There's nothing wrong with stuff. But when you put stuff, is more important than a human being, there's a problem. Malcolm X said back in the day, they talking about civil rights. What about human rights? Mm -hmm. We have not yet learned how to be human because we have not, we don't live among human beings. We love those who love things and the worshiper of dead things. That's, that's a, a big problem that we have but see when you're giving people soul you're giving the dead their life back we want to give us we want to raise the dead to life and don't you know that's what we are so brothers and sisters even in our bad condition people follow us we rap, they want to rap. Whatever, how we dance. The reason why people love America or like America is because of our presence here and the swag we have. Look what we've done for basketball and football. It's just how we do things. Even economically, we got a group thing. Kitchen. And you can go to a kitchen. One of my favorite shows is like Hell's Kitchen. But if you went to a kitchen where Basically, soul brothers and sisters, in, they get a rhythm going. Somebody might get to singing and get to throwing that hash and getting to cooking and maybe get to grooving. We, nobody can't, can't, can't get down like we do because that's us. See, we come from, we come from a bad, horrible, horrible place. And in the Quran, it says that they plan and Allah plans also. See, the devil, these crackers, when they did, did to us like they done, they did not know that in essence, they was creating the best people ever produced on the planet. Mm -hmm. They didn't know that. They, don't, they didn't know that. They thought they was just creating the perfect slave. There is no blood on our hands. Nobody can say that we done anything to anybody. There's another uh, scriptures, it talks about in the Bible that the meek shall inherit the earth. Who is more meek than a slave? Who is more meek? Who is more humble than a slave? You done took every damn thing from me, including my humanity. 
So we're coming from a terrible place. Now the only thing we have to do is get ourselves together. And we need to leave this race crap alone. We need to get up out of because you cannot beat this cracker at his own game. You cannot beat him being black. You cannot beat him being African. You can't beat him doing those things. The only thing you can do is get deeper and deeper into his trap. But when we begin to embrace our soul, when you begin to embrace life, and it's just mm -hmm. like, and it's just like many of you don't understand or can't comprehend what I'm talking about when it comes talking about when I speak about having life. See, I'm a farm boy. We raise chicken. I could put a seed in the ground and I watch that seed coming from up out of the ground and there's a tomato plant. When I woke up in the morning, there was chickens cockadoodle doing and the birds and the deer. I was surrounded by life all the time. So you don't have the respect for life. That's why you can put a diamond and some gold and this money and all this material garbage over human life because somebody has created you and conditioned you to be less than a human being because nothing, nothing should be more important than another human being, nothing more valuable. So you got people starving to death, plenty of food on the planet, but you got people starving to death. That should not be happening because we care more about, I want the flow show. You want to be like the racist and have them mentality because I want to be better and superior over somebody. You can't stand. We have this mentality. We cannot stand to be an inferior. We always want somebody to be a slave to us. We all, we want somebody to be and inferior. And your idea, your idea of these labels that we carry, what make these labels so special? Soul came from your womb. These other labels and, and things that we have, they didn't come from us. Black Muslim did not come from us. That chemist, that didn't come from us. Here is a label if you build on it, that came from you. You think all these other labels is better that will come from up out of your own loin? And then you keep telling me about the ancestors. Well, the ancestors gave you this. The only thing you have to do is build on it. And like we discussed earlier in this conversation, build on it and take it to the next level and get up out of racism. That way they can't call you no racist. I just sticking up for my tribe, my nation. We are the rainbow people that I call us also. Because here we are, we are dark-skinned people. But when you look at us, we don't look like nobody. We can look like almost anybody. We, our skin tone is from the very light to the very dark. We can, re we represent humanity, period. You don't wanna be that? Why do you think so many people are, are really jealous of us? Because we look like, we can look like almost anybody. We are humanity. We are humanity. Building a nation. I'm gonna end in this con my conversation on this on this note. You think very small when you talk about I want to build a nation. That's not my premise. That's too little for me. My vision goes beyond building a nation. Very nice, and y'all can't hardly do that. <laughs> You, you can't control your neighborhood. You don't control a town. You don't control a state, city, or nothing like that. I don't know how y'all gonna build a nation. You can't even control your neighborhood. But my vision is to change reality as we know it. This, how we live right now, didn't always exist. Somebody caused this to come into existence. And the same way they caused this to come into existence, we can reverse it and take it back out. In fact, all humanity needs a change. All over this planet, not only dark-skinned people of America, but all of us are suffering under, under this lifestyle, which is unnatural. It's unnatural lifestyle. It's against nature. It's slavery. Even the rich people are, are slaves. They don't know it, they might not know it, 
but they are. Live a little bit more comfortable, house niggas, but they slaves too. You can't even enjoy your life. We got to get up five days a week, 40 hours and whatever, and you work. That's why a lot of marriages and families fall apart because you're so busy working, trying to get these material things for your family because you want to live a certain way. And so the husband is on the job and Sister Rashida is on his job. He got a wife, but Sister Rashida looking real good. He's on the same job with Sister Rashida for eight, nine hours. Pretty soon, he don't want to be with his wife. He want to be with Sister Rashida. That's what happens. Because we work and we can't, we can't be with our mates. We can't be with our families. Our lifestyles turn. You can't even enjoy your life. Then you work hard all your life. Then by the time you get to a chance to enjoy your life, you, you got gray in your head, wrinkles all in your face, your, your legs and stuff all broke up. And you want to continue to live this way? And see, the people who condition this life or create this life, they know if you make it past 65, you're doing damn good because they expect you to die before 65. Yep. And you want, and I don't care what your color race supposed to be, this is how you really want to live. You can't even enjoy your life. You only have one life. And you're going to let some sucker snatch the majority of your life, snatch your happiness from you because you're trying to make. $10.50 an hour, mm. and you lose your family, don't know your children, die at 54 years old. I had a, a, a sister, my sister, uh, Madonna Brown. I didn't know she was a, a, mm. a, a famous dancer. I didn't know she had passed. She was 54 years old. She passed last year. Mm. That's she, she, didn't she, could. She, she didn't think that she would get colon cancer. You know, she, she was into fitness and she was a dancer. So we never know when we're going to go. We need to be able to enjoy our life. We can't enjoy our life. We're too busy working, giving somebody else our damn life. All of us, every human being on this planet should be sick of this kind of lifestyle. Everybody, regardless to your race, all of us. I want to change reality, not just build a nation. I want to change reality, period, to benefit all human beings because all of us deserve happiness. We are only here for a brief amount of time. I want you and I be a little happy. Enjoy your children. Enjoy your life. Enjoy, enjoy a rover. You got a dog in the house. Enjoy yourself instead of working yourself like a damn slave, which most people on the planet, that's what they do. It's so bad in Japan, they commit suicide over it. Mm. Liberate yourself. Let us liberate ourselves and take ourselves to that next level. And that's why it's important to try to find, again, economic solutions. Because I think that if we can find collective economic solutions, we can kind of alleviate some of that uh, pressure and stress that you're talking about that this is designed for. I mean, looking at the uh, tax system, for example, you're absolutely right. The way that the tax system is set up in this country, it's based on a life expectancy and they, I mean, anybody, just look at the tax system. That's all I'm going to say on that. Yeah. Look at the tax system. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it proves exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, life expectancy and how you have to work so hard right. um, to make money in the system and then have to turn around and be taxed. And then you got to do all this, this retirement savings and then have to maneuver to make sure that that money isn't taxed and it's just it's really designed for people to stay within the masses should i say no matter what color you are but it really affects our people i think more than anybody else but it's designed to keep us in a certain in a certain uh category mm -hmm. of control it's it's and that's why a lot of people going back to that idea of nihilism mm -hmm. people are not satisfied because of what you're saying they can't it's a lot of people out there that got gifts and talents that they were born with. And because they have to go work a, a, a nine to five, 40 hour week job, they can't pursue those things and they're upset and unhappy. And it mm -hmm. should not be that. Right. That people should be able to pursue whatever gift and talent that they're able to pursue. But that's a whole nother conversation because that deals with the type of 
economic system we're under, which I don't think is conducive to people pursuing what their God-given talent is. But it definitely, definitely creates a lot of discontentment and sadness and depression and anger and all these things that human beings were not, it's, uh, like you said, it's unnatural. Yeah. They don't be this way. Yeah. It's why people act the way that they do. Crazy yeah. if that's the word you want to use, but you know, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah, brother, um, going, going back to your, um, uh, and I agree with Sister Rashida there about the economics, um, but but when you was talking about the people of soul, yeah. um, for a long time um, on, on the Talk Real Solution, mm -hmm. I was trying to tell people that we are in America, mm -hmm. our own tribe. Right. Um, like you pointing out, whenever we're reaching back to ancient Kemet or the Hebrew Israelites or or the Muslims or whatever we're trying to do, um, we're not looking at who we are in the United States of America. Now, slavery has caused us to be in this predicament, and we're the only ones on the planet in this predicament, but we don't realize uh, that that's, that's us. This is our tribe. Yeah. Like you, you call it the people of soul, and what came out of that event was what you describe as the people of soul, because that's what we've created here in the United States of America. Nobody else on the planet um, has this type of origin, this type of culture, this type of development that we have, um, mm -hmm. except for the people that has been descended from slaves uh, mm -hmm. here in America. But what has happened, I think, is we uh, look outside of who we are to try to identify with something mm -hmm. we, 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 we're always trying to identify with the i don't know um with, with sister rashida here with her advocacy she can look in the bible and you can look at the story of ham and you can say okay well that's where this started from because ham was cursed because of his dark skin or you know mm -hmm. the descendants of ham was cursed because of his dark skin and mm -hmm. and people try to identify with that and then the people of Egypt, uh, they, they try to identify with these ancient people. and But we don't look at our ancestors that live, breathe, and, and, mm -hmm. and died right here on this right. soil. Right. Uh, and because we're, you know, to get us here, and we don't we don't embrace that for some reason. Um, but I think you're on a, a, a good uh, path when you say the people of soul. I think that's a good identity for it. As long as it ain't got no... No religious tenant to no, it, you know. No, no. <laughs> you know it's, it's just as an identity, you know, I can live with that. Right. But when it comes to, you know, trying to put magic, to, I can't do the magic <laughs> stuff, but, you know, as an identity, I got that, you know, because I, I want to embrace, just like I say, people say, what do you identify? Do you identify as black or African American? Mm -hmm. I, I want to identify with what my people is saying they are. Right. If they're saying they're black, I'm black. If they're saying they're African American, I'm African American. You know, it doesn't matter to me. Long as us as a community right. has a, has an identity, I go right up under that umbrella, no matter what it is. You know, Absolutely. and uh, you you the way you characterize it, you give it the history, you give it the origin, you give it the the, the story behind it, and you say, okay, well, this is something that we all. Can be a part of so i agree with that whole idea there um that's it thank you there um well we want to go ahead we we've uh gone to the to the end of our journey here <clears throat> and uh i want to uh as you know i want to uh share a thousand dollars with my audience all my uh my subscribers and listeners here, and I want to give you the information that you need in order to uh, <clears throat> in order to get that done. And uh, simply, I think it's in the description box. All you need to do, I'm going to do a raffle probably next week, uh, maybe Sunday. I'm going to do it live. Uh, I'm going to do a raffle. Um, some of the money I've already uh, decided to give away to some of my subscribers. I found out they was in bad shape, so uh, instead of a thousand, I have a I have eight hundred, I think. <clears throat> but uh, I think what I'll do is I I shut the uh, I divide the eight hundred into fifty dollar shots, and uh, I do a raffle. What you need to do is send send your email to uh, the Realities Temple on Earth at AOL.com. It's in the uh, description box of this video. It should be there. Send me your email. 
and put in the topic, you know, Angel Snubbed Up 7 Raffle, so I know, because I get a lot of garbage coming to my email. And I'll put all the names, and some of you already know, like Brother Leon, I'm going to take care of Brother Leon. I don't, he don't have to raffle nothing. I got you, Brother Leon. I just need your information, how, how you want to get paid. But uh, we're going to do this next week. Put your name. Uh, just send me your email address. Put it in the, uh, send it to the email. Angel Snub Nub 7 Raffle. And next week live. And since I only have 10 subscribers, I might be able to do, they might get more than 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> only have 10 subscribers. Uh, so they should be, they, they should make a killing. But I want to do, I want to do this because I get so many, sick and tired of so many uh, channels and brothers and sisters um, out, out, in, out in YouTube land. They always begging and wanting something from me. Always. And I don't see, when do people start giving back? I think there's a sister, uh, Sister Sci-Fi. I think she does raffles and they can win a TV or something or whatever. I think she does that. But she's none of these other people like Sinetta TV or Brother Ben X and some of these other folks, the, the Vice Show, they want you to always give and support them for making a YouTube video. And my thing is, what the hell are you, what information, here you are, you look at a, you, you go to somebody else's TV, you go to Channel 4, or whatever, wherever you get your information from, you're not doing your own research. The only thing you're going to do is give your spin on a, on a show or some type of news uh, story that you didn't get, you got it from somebody else, and you want me to spend money and pay you. Are you crazy? All these people, I mean, what do they have to offer? They've been on here for years and years and years, and you don't even see a bubble gum machine from these people. Mm. At least I would get you a bubble gum machine. I'll show you on the corner. Here's the reality temple <laughs> bubble gum <laughs> machine. You know, put a quarter in and get you a piece of gum. I'll show you something. <laughs> From what you what you gave me. Now, 2018 is going to put pressure on our Dr. Umar Johnson, because Dr. Umar Johnson said there will be a school in 2018. Now he, now technically, now he has all the way to December the 31st. <laughs> <laughs> technically, he has all the way to December 31st to get that done. But he said, because he didn't give no specific date, but he did say uh, there will be a school in 2018. My thing about um, <laughs> Umar Johnson, I was getting ready to send that guy. I was getting ready to send him a grand. Sure was. Had it in the envelope. All they had to do was put a stamp on it. Had to check in the mail. Then I think I was listening to Brother uh, Tyron. I think I was listening to your program. Mm -hmm. And uh, you was talking about, and uh, and uh, you was talking about, he made a comment talking about these uh, trifling Negroes. They only gave me two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Some crap he was saying. I mean, he got this dude got some nerve. Shouldn't, I ain't giving you a dime. How the hell are you gonna right. ask people for money? You ain't gave them nothing. They ain't doing it there and got the nerve to tell them, yeah, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's all you gonna give me? Mm -hmm. I bet you no step got on that. On that envelope that day, yep, yep. Ain't, it ain't happening. And plus, you plus, I didn't really research it. I was just going by, you know. I just like the idea of it. I didn't really research it because there's a lot of questions that go along with that, and that's that's not a good deal. That's not a good deal. And on top of that, my thing is, we should concentrate on food, clothing, and shelter. We don't need a we don't need a school right now. We need food, clothing, and shelter. If you concentrate on food, clothing, and shelter, you, you create jobs for the people. You, you create economics. So when those children are able to go to a Umar Johnson school, they're not getting milk from the, from the white man. They're getting milk from their own cows. They're getting shoes on their feet from our own factories. They're getting, they're getting the thing, they're getting paper produced in our mills. That's what you want for the children. What if if Dr. Johnson is setting up a school? How the children gonna eat? Where you? What the food coming from? The clothes the children wear. 
The books. Who's publishing the books? Food, clothing, and shelter. That's the basis of any nation. That's the basis of any people who want to be liberated. You need to feed yourself, clothe yourself, and shelter yourself. And then out of all the things, they keep talking about this nation building thing. I wonder why they never talk about the state of uh, the country of Liberia. That's our ancestors. Those are our people. They came from us. But they never talk about Liberia. They always talk about Ganga, Nigeria. Here, you, here are our people in Africa. You talk about you're African. Here are our people who really are Africans now. Because generations have passed. They don't know nothing about the United States. They are right there in Africa. You claim you want to build a nation. Why they never talk about Liberia? Well, you see, uh, the white man set up Liberia. Whatever you do, the white man going to help you. <laughs> You can't do nothing without the white man. That's stupid to me. What, what can you do without the white man? You need his money. You got George Washington in your pocket. Matter of fact, some of these niggas brag about it. They brag about the cars they get from the white man. I saw, uh, what's his name? I saw Polite and uh, what's that brother? Uh, damn, what's his name? Anyway, they was bragging about their cars. Negroes, y'all didn't build no car. From the white man, you didn't produce no car, you didn't do nothing. Everything you do is connected. You have an umbilical cord to your masa because he's your real parent. But this is a parent you need to get rid of. You need to cut that cord, get the hell away from them because they are abusive parents. They don't love you. They don't like you. You're just something to use, something to exploit, something to make them look good. Look what America does in, in, in track and field. Look at our beautiful Beyonce. You know, but Beyonce is a nigga. Oprah's a nigga. They all know that. They don't think Beyonce don't know. Jay-Z, Oprah, they all know where they really stand. They, they know. But their money and their little fame covers the nut. That's all. That's all. So we need to, you know, I want to give to my people, my audience, because who knows? Somebody might need that, really could use that little $50 or $75. I'm, I'm in a position to give it, and I'm cool. I like, to, I like to do that. No big deal, because I don't trip off diamonds. I could come on here and buy some bling. They're like, damn, brother, Talib really living it up. Look at all that bling he got. I say, yeah, I look good, don't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not into that. Don't care nothing about that. I care about you. I care about us. Not interested. You know, if we want to do good, all of us do good. Do bad, all of us do bad. We all in the same situation. We all, we all the same. So, so send just send me your email. Give me, give me, give me your information to the email. Sister Rashida put it in the chat room, and it should also be in the video, video description box. Send your Angel Snub Number Seven raffle. Put it in the topic. And let me get your name. I'm going to put it in a bag, shake it up. And since I only have 10 subscribers, it's going to be very little shaking. <laughs> uh, and uh, next Saturday, I'll let you know, next Saturday or, 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 or Sunday, we'll do the shaking and find out who the winners is. And I get the email. We'll pass, find out how you want to get paid, and we'll figure it out and whatever. And I want to say this while I'm on the subject. There are some of those, you, you ain't going to give nobody no money for real. Uh, where, where the proof? Now, for niggas like that, this is what I want to tell you. If you want me to show all the receipts to all the money that I gave away, you pay me 50 bucks, I'll show you and give you all the receipts, and I'm going to take that 50 bucks that you give me for, for, because you want to see all the receipts because I'm a liar. Then I'm going to take the money that you give me and give it away too. <laughs> how about that? That's, what, that's how we're going to play that. And with that said and done, unless somebody... You want to make a comment? I don't know what happened to Hard Cold. I guess we got bored to him. <laughs> Alquan was here for a few minutes. I guess he couldn't take it. I don't know what happened to Alquan. But uh, we're open for uh, questions and comments. If there's no questions and comments, we're going we're gonna to ride out of here. I'm going I'm to ride out of here on my Pinto. <laughs> I, I have no problem. My, my Pinto still run. It's all good to me. <laughs> I, just say, I, I enjoyed it. I, I think this is great. I'm happy to be a part of it. So thank you. 
Yeah, me me too, uh Angel no, no, I appreciate it, man. You know, uh you know me, I got a I got a, a little shady history on YouTube here and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I enjoyed this right here because um you know I think I think that it's information I think that it's good that we get to, to have conversations about subjects like you put forward here about experiences so people can learn from it man that's just basically it you know um if people can take what they want to take from it or you know or not you know that's the way I look at it you either take it or not you keep believing in old fake ass Jesus <laughs> <laughs> now you know they don't want you that's how how you say that a fake ass Jesus you know you, you yeah. said, come on now yeah, you, I got to offend people <laughs> but it is what it is <laughs> I mean it is this is not to say, and I keep telling people all the time, this is not to say there's good information. There's good, there's good lessons in some of these religious things. There's no doubt about that. I mean, I've used it in my struggles because I remember those things. I come from, I come from the same place you come from. Mm -hmm. I was a Christian. I was a Muslim. I understand those things. I understand. But see, you, we have to learn how to, as they say, eat the meat throughout the bone. Some of this stuff is taking us out of reality, and that's not what I represent. We got to keep it real. You know, I have no problem. I have no problem. If I approach a woman and she just don't like me, it'll hurt my feelings. I'll probably cry a little bit or whatever. But I would rather cry a little bit than and accept the truth of the matter than if she's smiling at me or just want to be my friend that, that there's some kind of way we're gonna get together no that's that's not reality that's not reality mm -hmm. leave it leave it alone i can handle a little heartache because terry ellis don't really like me i'm not her type <laughs> okay all right i sent sister rashida a love letter and she said <laughs> you don't like, like me but you just you're just too old and you're not my type Okay, sister, I I can handle it. You know, I'll be on here like Tari's. You know, I might have to cry a little bit. But uh, I can handle the reality of it. It's better to hurt than to live that lie. Hmm. Ain't nothing wrong. You know, truth hurts. And if it don't hurt you, chances are something is wrong. Because people think, I come on here and give my opinion. My opinion don't mean a damn thing. I'm looking for the truth. That's what I'm looking for. Whether the truth hurts me, feels good, or it don't. That's all I want. If we are Native Americans here, I can handle that. If we are Africans, I can handle it. However it comes, I can handle it. I just want to know what is the truth of the matter. That's all I want to know. I can handle the truth. I want to know the truth. But some of us already believe crap. And they want it to be their way. Well, that ain't how truth works. That's not how it works. That's why many of us don't like going to the doctor, because the doctor might tell you something you don't want to hear. Well, sir, uh, you got stage three prostate cancer. And you already knew something was wrong because you couldn't pee right. So you already knew. But we don't like to, we don't like to deal with, with the truth. But with that said, the truth of the matter is we need to get out of here. It took enough of everybody's time. I appreciate, I appreciate everyone coming here. Brother. Brother Leon Fletcher in the house, even Return of the Brothers in the house. King Noble was here and some other persons that I recognize. Um, I thank everyone for participating, coming here. And see, this is another thing. I open up the forum. We're here. All these people talk about, I want to discuss with you and de debate you. And Here's the opportunity. They never show up. I wonder why is that? Do my breath stink? Can you just like you, Sister Rashida, they talk about you, whatever, and whatever, and you give them an opportunity to, to, to debate or whatever. They don't, they don't show up. Why they don't want to show up? You know why? Because we bad. <laughs> we some bad mama jams. They can't, they can't do no. You know something? If you put me, yourself, and Brother Tyrone in a room among any of them suckers out on YouTube, they couldn't do nothing with us. We be tagged to the pow, pow, pow. They ain't do nothing with us. We too. Oh. Can't, they can't do nothing with us. Let, let Sarnetta put us on Sarnetta TV. Put the best that he got against us. We go on Sarnetta TV. Get, get, your, get your boy.
they wouldn't last two or three rounds. All I'm going to say is they better come with some hardcore academic facts. Because when we're talking about debating, I only care about what is factual. That's it. That's not what they're about, though. They're they magicians. They're not, they're, not, they're, not, they're, not, they're not about keeping it real. They, can't, they couldn't do nothing with us. And I keep telling people, you could take, take us three, get Minister Farrakhan. He's supposed to be such a heavy hitter. Get Umar Johnson and one more so-called heavy hitter. We'll, we'll blow them out the wall. I agree with you. You're gonna be praying, you're gonna be praying to Allah real quick. We'll mop the floor with them. Oh yeah, no doubt. Ain't nobody could handle us. Just us. <laughs> they couldn't do nothing with us. <laughs> they know that. That's why they stay away from us. <laughs> blow them out the wall. But with that said, let me stop running my mouth. Let's let's go. Let's go. Let's uh, go and peaceful and our, our back to our homes and places where we. We need to do, and maybe you go buy you some Christmas presents. <laughs> 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 oh, you know, uh, whatever we need to do. But I really enjoyed, you know, this conversation. Like I said, we don't know uh, if we'll be able to do it again, or you know, nothing is guaranteed. You know, I might have a heart attack after the meeting. Who knows? Oh, but don't least, say that. But you know something. But I can say I enjoyed myself. He died Likewise. happy. I died happy. Yeah. So with that said, y'all, uh, this is Angus number seven, your, your soul brother number one, uh, with my special guest, Sister Rashida, uh, <laughs> Sister Rashida Strober. <laughs> Bye, y'all. The world's first dark skin activist and my bro soul brother, Tyrone Thompson from Blog Talk Radio. That's uh, right. And uh, make sure that y'all Subscribe and, and and keep in contact with this brother and sister, cause you know we are on point. We here for you for real. We are here for you for real. It ain't about money. It ain't about fame and fortune. We just want we here for you for real. Right. Change the situation, cause we've been in hell long enough. With that said, as Don Cornelius always used to say, "Pardon, I wish us love, peace, <laughs> and soul." <laughs> All right, Angel, no, no, and uh, Sister Rashida, I'll see y'all later. Bye bye. Bye. All right, bye bye.